Washington State Board of Regents, and we are officially called to order. Welcome. So glad that you're all joining us today. This is pretty exciting. We are, um, we kicked off our morning in an amazing way. Uh, we are on the Health Sciences uh, campus of Washington State University, Spokane. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we sit and accept today as the traditional home of the Spokane tribe of Indians. I take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land. Um, the history is so rich of our Spokane um, Indians tribe here, and they're just amazing, amazing partners to our region. So um, I'm Marty Dickinson. I am the chairman of the Board of Regents. And um, as I said, what a wonderful way we were able to kick off this morning touring uh, the campus of Washington State University, Spokane. Um, I'd like to say a special thank you to uh, Daryl, Dr. DeWalt for the, uh, coordinating that and for Margaret Holt, thank you for all the coordination you have done to host us. So we appreciate being here. And then to everybody um, from the Spokane campus, thank you for being so gracious. Uh, in, in my report, um, a couple of quick things that I'd just like to mention. We are um, amongst greatness, which is uh, our regent, Enrique Cerna. Um, on April 6, I was able to attend the WSU Merle College Hall of Achievement Awards ceremony, as was Regent Ramos. And we got to see Regent Cerna um, be inducted into the Hall of uh, the Hall of Achievement at the Edward R. Murrow College of Communication. They honored and recognized Regent Cerna, whose career has um, spanned 47-ish years, somewhere around there, um, in the Seattle media. Um, he is a veteran journalist and a 10-time Northwest Regional Emmy Award. Congratulations, Regent Cerna. Fortunate to have you as a regent and as a coach. <laughs> um, one thing that I just wanted to do um, highlight uh, that I think is worth noting, and it's just uh, I think speaks a lot to the leadership of President Kurt Schultz, um, as well as uh, many others. But um, WSU right now is able to um, say that we have many amazing female um, leaders leading our institution. And um, we have our new Dean of College of Agriculture, Dr. Wendy Powers. We have our Dean of Veterinary and Medicine, um, which is Dr. Dory Borgerson. We have our Dean of College of Nursing, which is Dr. Mary Coithen. We have our Dean of College of Engineering, which is Dr. Mary um, Rizak. And so I just want to take a moment to just let that settle in. That's a pretty outstanding and incredibly impressive and well done, uh, President Schultz, and to everybody that has a hand in that. Again, Dr. Chilton, thank you. I know that you are a wonderful advocate for a lot of these female leaders. And just the, the continued focus and lens that Washington State University has around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think we're leading by example in that space, so thank you. Um, Again, another really exciting time um, because this is the last meet regent meeting of the academic year. Um, and it is a barn burner of a meeting. Uh, so um, it's, those of you uh, that were here yesterday, it's a long day. And so we appreciate everybody that participates and all the work that goes into these meetings from um, leadership, from faculty, from the administration. Thank you. It is immense amount of work. So thank you very much. I just want to Um, the last piece that's, I guess, the most important and the most exciting is that it's commencement time for Washington State University, and um, what an honor to be a regent, and I know I speak for my fellow regents, to uh, be getting this afternoon to participate in graduations here in Spokane, some of us participating in graduations in Pullman, some in Vancouver, some at our Everett campus, so um, just an amazing time when we get to recognize what Washington State University is doing on behalf of the state and fulfilling our land grant mission. 
um, but also really just making the world a better place by graduating over 4,000 students um, over the next two days. So let's do this. Let's go Cougs. And we'll now just jump right into our meeting. I would like to remind the audience members um, that we, um, you're invited to view the Board of Regents meeting through YouTube and as we are being live streamed, there is a link to that on the Regents website. Um, I now would like to provide a reminder that we'll have public comment per period during this meeting. The public comment period will be after the regular agenda items and will be up to uh, 10 minutes. Each speaker will be allowed two minutes. Preference will be given to speakers who have signed up in advance and who are speaking to matters that are before the board or will be before the board in future meetings. If anyone has not signed up in advance and would like to, please sign up uh, with the board's assistant, Desiree Jacobson, right over here. Prior to your comments, we ask you state your name, your affiliation, and your subject matter. And now it is my pleasure to turn it over to President Schultz. All right. Should I sit or stand? Is it easier for people to see online? Doesn't it's matter. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> well, good morning, everybody. And uh, I agree with uh, Regent Dickinson. Thanks for a, a great day yesterday. It's a long day. The May meeting is always the one where we take up tuition and fees and lots of budgetary things. And I know it's always a, a challenging part to go through and look at all that data and information. But thanks for the, the excellent day yesterday. And it was nice to have uh, dinner last night with our men's and women's basketball coach and Pat Chun, our athletic director, and just kind of relax a little bit after a lengthy day. Um, before I get into my formal update, uh, I just want to reflect a little bit on our meeting yesterday, particularly about some of the areas of fiscal recovery that the university has undergone over the last, you know, five to six years. And I think it's a testament to multiple things, and it's uh, it, to me, to make all that work, you've got to have several characteristics in place. You've got to have uh, really outstanding collaborative leadership. And uh, <clears throat> Stacy and her team have done an amazing job, but it can't be just a single individual or a single team. It's amazing if you think of the president, the chancellors, our staff in finance and administration, our faculty and staff and student leadership, and you get everybody kind of pulling in the same direction, it's pretty stunning to look at where we've been and where we are today. And I think it's just a reminder that any organization, if you got everybody kind of generally moving in the same direction, you can do really magnificent things. And so I just appreciate my colleagues and everybody who's worked so hard to get us there. And now I have two things moving forward, right? Let's not get back to where we were before. Um, and secondly, now, I think the exciting thing for all of us is looking ahead over the next four or five years and thinking what are those next big things that we want to all do together. So let's reflect a little bit on our time since the last Regents meeting. Uh, Regent Dickinson already talked about uh, the fact that we have an incoming Dean of Connors. So uh, Dean Wendy Powers comes to us from the University of California system. Um, Elizabeth did a great job of putting together a fantastic search committee. Uh, Dory Borgeson led that particular search. We had a very diverse set of candidates. Um, I've been here now six years. This was the third Connors Dean search we've done. We had one failed search. It's by far the most diverse set of finalists that we've had. And to land our top candidate almost immediately speaks well to Elizabeth and, and her uh, ability to close the deal and get it done. But we were really looking forward. Wendy will sort of be around and transitioning a little bit before she starts in August. Really looking forward to having her as a member of our leadership team. Just a little bit about COVID. Uh, I don't know about you all. I'm hopeful in the fall I can skip talking about COVID and these updates, but I think uh, I want to just keep a couple things in mind. Uh, one, think about the last two years. It's been a really challenging last two years of public higher education. Rich Hadley mentioned that this morning. Um, I, I'm so proud of how our faculty, staff, and students have managed, led, work together through uh, COVID. But I also know that just like any other leader of a major organization, our workforce is tired. People are exhausted. They're kind of a little bit tired of the, it's this way one month and it's this way the next month. Uh, we have economic pressures, you have all that there. So 
Um, we are really going to focus on ensuring or trying to ensure as much as possible that people use the next three months to get really refurbished and refreshed and ready for the fall semester when it comes here. As I always, when you commencement, I'm always thrilled and all that. I swear I wake up the next morning and it's August 1st. And I just, it's going to be really important for us to make sure that people are taking that time this summer doing whatever they need to to make sure that they're really ready to go. So I'm proud of where we are, but I also understand that people are really a little bit on edge and uh, just are exhausted. And we just need to reflect that in, in what we ask our folks to do this summer. Um, we, uh, we've had a lot of wonderful in-person events over the last several months at all of our campus locations. And uh, it's, it was sort of a, a wake up and a reminder after not having them for two years, what it's like to be back in person and do that. One of those events is our showcase. Uh, every year, this is an opportunity to really showcase across the system, uh, some of our exceptional faculty and staff colleagues. And I show three uh, here, uh, John Roll, Zoe High Eagle Strong uh, and Hakan, uh, who all were recognized for the great work uh, that they continue to do across the system. Now, there were multiple awards that were given to many faculty. We can't fit them all uh, on a slide, but uh, I continue to be impressed with the number of folks that we have at Washington State that have been here for 20 years, 30 years. They've had preeminent careers in their fields. They could have gone lots of different places, and they have decided to stay and remain with WSU. I've worked at three other land grants. Neither of those three can say the same thing. Uh, they may want to, but we have something special and it's a real strength at WSU that I think sometimes we take for granted. And uh, anyway, we really appreciate the opportunity to uh, recognize our colleagues in person. Uh, and that was really a fun and festive evening. Uh, we also are now starting to have more of the lectures and talks and things on our different campuses. Again, after a little bit of a hiatus because you just didn't have these big in-person events. Um, the Foley Institute uh, had General Mattis come and, and talk about democracy at home and abroad. We had a huge crowd to see him. We had dinner that evening. Um, and he's just really a fascinating individual. We're lucky to have him in the state of Washington. And I know Chancellor Sandra Haynes and the Tri-Cities, so, uh, they have a library named after him dealing with leadership. And uh, <clears throat> it's a, it was a fascinating lecture because there were certain aspects of what he talked about that you say might fall on the right side of the political spectrum. And there were certain things he talked about that would fall on the left side of the political spectrum. And it's great to have these kind of discourses where people are going to challenge our thinking. And uh, I really did appreciate the, the opportunity to spend some time with him. And, and uh, he's going to be continue to speak his mind. And he was very upfront about wanting to continue to do that and feels that that's something that's important uh, for him to do moving forward. Um, the annual Murrow Symposium is always one of our really uh, marquee events at Washington State University, particularly in the Pullman area. Uh, we had Ann Curry this year come and speak. Um, I've had an opportunity all my entire time to spend individual time with these folks that I've seen. and broadcast journalism or on the radio or things like that, uh, you know, growing up. And it's I'm always a little in awe that somebody would actually want to sit down and say hello and talk to me. Uh, she was just such a humble person and told such a great story. And uh, what I want us to do looking ahead, and I'm meeting with Dean Bruce Pinkleton in the next week or so, is how can we, we talk about telling our story well. We did, it, I think, a great job, Phil and his team and others around the, the gift that we got for our engineering school, to me, the Murrow Symposium is another one of those really flagship events for the institution that I want to make sure we get out there. And we always get national visibility over this. And I think it's a real opportunity for us, not just in Pullman, but I'd like to see us bring it aggressively to other markets in the state and really use this to, to tell our story on a national, international level. Uh, speaking of, and this is all speakers we've had in the last couple of months, uh, we had Kim Budell. She gave the John and Janet Creighton Distinguished Lecture. Uh, she was a personal colleague and friend of Yogi Gupta. And many of you have met Yogi, speaking of somebody who's been at Washington State his entire career in the shock physics area. Uh, Kim uh, talked a lot about 
uh, women in science and engineering, STEM career fields. Uh, she runs a national lab. And uh, really, we had a lot of interesting and frank conversations about workforce issues and things like that. I feel in Washington, you know, we're sort of struggling sometimes to meet salary demands, things like that. You can imagine that same thing, trying to run a government lab with all the constraints and in some of the highest cost of living areas in the country. They have real, if I think I got challenges, they had real challenges dealing with, uh, you know, how do you keep your high quality employees that everybody's coming to try and get uh, those kind of things. So fascinating lecture and we look forward to returning the visit and taking a, a high level delegation from WSU there to see what other types of things we can learn. Um, <clears throat> several years ago, they pioneered a, a group of our alumni got together and put together what they call Coogs First, a show to bring folks together largely at that time in the Seattle area that were businesses that were all owned by Coogs. And the idea was you develop a, a business network of individuals that work in this space. You do a a showcase once a year where you show all this. And then around that, you have a bunch of student events. Like we got our business students that come and they uh, hear from panels about internships and things like this. We have our Murrow students involved with this as well. Well, they expanded it several years ago to do it in Spokane as well. So last week we had our Coots first show here in Spokane uh, in the convention center. It was great to see people again out uh, being around each other and uh, you realize how much you miss those types of things when you don't have them. So uh, this network will continue to grow and uh, we look forward to maybe, you know, I, I think at some point we're interested in taking it to the Portland, Vancouver area next so that you really kind of have three of these networks that are done uh, by our alumni and friends. So uh, this, was, this was a lot of fun. Um, they always shoot B-roll type of thing and they are like, you know, Kirk, we need you to do something fun. So, um, Kyle and I had a little basketball shooting kind of thing. Kyle Smith, you know, you go, what kind of judgment do you have as president to take your men's basketball coach and, and go against him? That was because, thank God, Cammie wasn't around because I know I would have got beat really badly. But uh, we had a great time. And uh, once one of the things that we do as a senior leadership team is have a booth and then different people are there. So folks can come by. And Noel and I are going to be there or Elizabeth's going to be there and have a chance to visit. So uh, if you have not been to one, even if you got an hour, it's worth just kind of going, wandering through and seeing everything. They're, they're really fantastic. Um, State of the University, I think, as I moved to a more visible, uh, formal role as assistant president, that means that you're going to be doing some things outside of the Pullman campus. So this year, I did my State of the University address, was hosted by Chancellor Sandra Haynes, and we did it in the Tri-Cities in our new collaboration hall. I uh, did it online. And I think, you know, in the past, we would do these in an auditorium and you have people there and we'd stream it. We have at least twice the number of people now that will watch a streaming thing as we're totally doing it before. So I think we're going to continue to want to move around to the different places in the state when you do things like this, because you really are doing the state of the university, not a state of the particular campus. So uh, that was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. And if you have not been in Collaboration Hall, I think everybody here has. It's a stunning facility, and I'm glad we were able to do that. Look forward to uh, having a new stunning facility in Vancouver uh, here in the next year or so. Uh, the record setting gift for engineering, um, I've been fundraising most of my career. Uh, you don't get many gifts of you know, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. So when you do, it's a great celebratory affair. Um, there's a certain number of people like me and Dean Rezac and others that sometimes happen to be in leadership positions when these things happen. Um, typically, this does not happen overnight or it doesn't happen. You visit somebody the first time and ask them for a gift of this magnitude. Typically, it's a 15 or 20 year relationship that's built up and you bring somebody something they feel passionate about at the right point in time. So uh, my wife, Noel, has worked with uh, Schweitzer Engineering for uh, a couple decades. Uh, Mary Rezac had worked with them in engineering quite a bit. Um, it was really a team approach. And then behind the scenes, nobody sees this. Uh, Don is here with the foundation. Uh, There's people that stayed up a lot overnight to get paperwork done to make sure that we could have all this done. And that's the non-sexy part of fundraising. It's not the announcement, but you also got to make sure that all those other things are lined up with university policy and the donor feels good about that. And everybody pulled together 
in about 10 days and made all this work and uh, really proud of the team for doing this. So um, last night we had the opportunity to spend some time with our coaches, but uh, I want to just reflect a little bit intercollegiate athletics, the uh, front court to the university. It's a you know, it's an analogy that's used by a lot of presidents. Uh, but as Pat has mentioned, it was really cool in March to still be following our men's and women's teams. And it's been a long time since we've been there. Uh, and this last year, we won, a, I think, we think three schools in the Pac-12 to go to a bowl game and be in postseason men's and women's basketball. So I think it says a lot. And if you've gotten to know any of the student athletes, too, they are just terrific young men and women, outstanding leaders. And uh, we're just it's cool to see this level of success. Um, my final slide is that one of the other things that we set up a few years ago is uh, we had a set of donors in the Seattle area <coughs> that said, hey, we'd like to get a bunch of us together, uh, each of us do a pooled resource and then fund university priorities that may be things that were a little bit on the edge or you didn't have other people interested in. Uh, what this has really changed into is something that was modeled a little bit on Shark Tank and uh, we give away this group contributes about 150 grand uh, each year to maybe a little bit more than that. And what happens is people submit proposals. Uh, they're, they're weaned down to about 12. Uh, then we have a, a set of criteria and presentations made. We get that down to six and uh, we'll be in Seattle next week where those six folks show up and they're in front of a set of donors and they get to go through a five minute presentation and pitch about what they would like to do. This is available to any faculty member, staff member, <laughs> student across the WSU system. And uh, it is fascinating <clears throat> to see the level of creative work our faculty are doing. Um, we always wish we could fund 20 of these things, but uh, we've got a faculty member in particular that now he's out of mechanical engineering, has been a finalist, I think, almost three times now. And they're all different projects. And they keep coming back with these cool types of things. And it's just, we're attracting amazing talent at Washington State University. And I think these are the types of things bringing philanthropy to bear in a creative way, uh, providing direct funding to faculty uh, and staff or students that have these great ideas is really kind of a fun way to, to be there. And uh, so look forward to telling you a little bit more about those folks. And sometime if Regents would be curious to just simply listen in on those final kind of things, I think we could arrange that. And I think you would leave just stunned at the great work that our folks are doing. So uh, with that, um, just a big thank you to our board for uh, this academic year. You know, graduation commencement to me always represents the penultimate end of the year uh, getting together with Cougar families to a graduate, celebrating together, people finishing up. Um, it's been a long year, but I could not be more pleased with where we are as an institution. I'm a glass half full person, and I think we've got our best yet ahead of us. So uh, thank you, and I appreciate the chance to share a little bit this morning. Thank uh, you. And I'm sure. Thank you. Excellent report. Thank you. All right, um, now we get to um, have the pleasure of receiving a report from Chancellor Dr. Daryl DeWalt from our WSU Health Sciences Spokane campus. Uh, Daryl, you're welcome to come on up. Thank you. We're going to have a little bit of a different presentation, a bit of a relay race here. <laughs> I have the privilege of having four colleagues uh, join me in the presentation. We're going to try to coordinate that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the first colleague that will be uh, taking the baton is Professor uh, Celestina Barbosa Liker, who serves as the Executive Vice Chancellor for the Health Sciences. So I'm going to get us started. But one of the cool things is we've asked three distinguished students from medicine, nursing, and pharmacy uh, to also provide a brief presentation. So you have a sense of what they experienced, where they've been, and where they're going. So improving healthcare in the state of Washington is in fact what we are passionate about. We do this through our education, our research, our clinical engagement. And what we're gonna talk about Briefly today, but there's much more to say, is kind of a little bit of our history and identity 
And then we will hear about some of the cool things going on. But I also, at the end, want to give you just a brief view of the vision for the future. So we'll talk about our health sciences. We'll talk about what's happening here um, in Spokane, but also across the state. The students will um, speak to you. I'm excited to hear from them. And then we'll talk about this vision called WSU Health. So as uh, Regent Dickinson has already done, uh, we would like to also acknowledge, I will not read the written acknowledgement up top, but I want to add something to this. We have the great privilege, and we're very grateful for the growing collaborations and partnerships between numerous, and let me say the number, well over 200 tribal nations across this nation. So over 200 with our research, our educational activities. And if you, if you think about the, the impact those tribal nations have on our vision and us being able to work with and collaborate with them, it's actually very impactful. So we're extremely grateful for that. So I do wanna remind you a little bit of our history and our health sciences history. Some of this is a bit opaque to people, so walk with me a bit. Most folks don't realize that our College of Pharmacy was one of the original degree programs offered at Washington State University. So it's 130 years old. It was in Pullman. And um, in 2014, Is it, Brett on the board then? <laughs> <laughs> he started the next year. The next year. See, you opened that. Thank you. Wow. I should sit down because I too am in that space. So, um, so you will know that Regent Blankenship was part of the approval for this degree program. But what people also don't realize is that the College of Veterinary Medicine, this is so cool. And while we're not going to say much about the vet med health sciences, think about that for a minute, the impact. But then nursing is more than 50 years old. It, it was located here in the Spokane region. It was a consortium effort where pharmacy was bifurcated between Pullman and Spokane for a long period of time. In 2014, just in 2014, pharmacy moved fully to this campus. So nursing, is moving into a, a new phase because it was a consortium for many years. It will now move to greater degree of independence where it's just WSU nursing. And then of course, our College of Medicine to be celebrated is seven years old. But if you look at the common theme and what we do so well is that we have a community-based health sciences. We are in all 39 counties. We have thousands of connections across the state between these colleges and others that have health sciences emphases. So we're at the forefront of meeting the state's needs and it's not just the doctors in rural and Eastern Washington, it is across this region. Uh, the nurses and pharmacists, and I've just shared anecdotally the impact of those nurses. Having interacted with one yesterday who will engage with patients and with families, it may touch 300 people in a year or more. And then you think about the over 200 that will graduate. Just do the math, folks. It's just amazing. So we're also, uh, we have a, an array of other health programs. Speech and hearing sciences is top shelf, as is nutrition and exercise physiology. These are terrific programs. So be aware that this is part of what you support. In addition, we are looking at the uh, development of a whole host of related programs that would include working with colleague chancellors and other campuses, social work, public health, and other programs. So the, the health sciences, we're looking at um, a great identity, a terrific history, in a superb future. I'm going to turn it over to Professor Arbosa Liker at this point. 
Well, our mission here as a land grant a university, our mission for the health sciences is pretty clear and direct. It's to really help to improve the health and well-being of every resident in the state of Washington and beyond. We meet that need with our education, research, healthcare, and of course our innovation and economic development. With that, I think about our startup incubator, uh, SP3 Northwest, our Center for Innovation, the Gleason Institute, things like that. You can see here on our map that we are a system within a system. So one WSU, we have WSU Health Sciences across the entire state of Washington. You can see there where we have our three colleges located um, across the five physical campuses there and also consortium sites for those of you that were in the discussion yesterday about Yakima, you see them there represented with nursing and pharmacy right now. A lot of areas for collaboration and growth across the state. There's another map that we don't have in the slide deck it has our clinical partners, and that map's pretty amazing because the entire state has been covered with stars and dots. So we do work across the state of Washington, and then of course outside of the state as well for all with all of our clinical partners, continuing to grow all the time as there are resources. So you can see here our enrollment. In 2020, we actually had an increase in student enrollment. Um, we, we've decreased a little bit in 2021. You can see there we're at a little over 1,600 students. That's about 800 professional students here from our campus, 500 undergraduate students and about 300 undergraduate students. We know it's on the news every day that we need to grow enrollment in the health sciences. We have a healthcare crisis within our state. We know that we need 6,000 nurses today, additional nurses today, just to meet the needs right now in our state of Washington. That will impact the healthcare that you and I all receive in this next year. We are poised and, and ready to grow should there be resources. And you'll hear about any you know, budgetary concerns and things like that in the public uh, comment portion from a colleague, Sue McFadden in the College of Nursing. We do have the largest nursing program at the state of Washington um, and, one, and one of the oldest and um, can grow. We will, need, we will need to grow to meet the needs for um, our state should there be resources for us to do so. Grants and contracts, that number, that, that graph, I'm simultaneously, it makes me excited. And then we also know the growing pains that are associated with growing uh, that fast. Um, we had hit uh, 40.9 million. It was our highest year. Continued growth, large growth with our research um, here on um, related to the health sciences from our three colleges based here in Spokane. Uh, this next year, we're probably going to come in at about 30 uh, million. So you will start to see a decrease and then we'll kind of flatten out, I think, because we've grown through our resources here. So as, again, yesterday in the education and research uh, session, um, we talked about the needs to continue to sustain this level of research and then to continue to grow. You can see the momentum though. That's, that's a pretty phenomenal graph. I love that graph. Um, and so what we do need though are continued investments um, in order to maintain that. Our research expertise is autism, addiction, mental health, behavioral health, cancer, environmental health, climate change here in the health sciences. Um, we're looking at community population and public health, and you'll hear a little bit more about that, um, as well as sleep and performance research. And of course, tribal health is huge. The tribal health that we do with our tribal communities across the state of Washington and throughout the nation is really driving those research dollars. We're pretty unique across the nation our research expertise here and can definitely continue to grow. <clears throat> so we have established programs in need of place and the launch of the new programs here. Just want to say again, we are statewide and beyond the health sciences, one, uh, one WSU health within a system. It's a system within a system. We are, the administrative home is here in Spokane, but we're statewide collaborating very closely with the other campuses and we'll continue to collaborate. Thank you, and many of you know this, but uh, Professor Barbosa Leiker is a, an elected member of Washington State Academy of Sciences. And recently, and we appreciate the Association for Faculty Women recognized her uh, as a Samuel A. Smith, with the Samuel A. Smith uh, Leadership Award. So. Uh, we're pretty proud of the work that she's done. And that's why you can see 
she got a little bit even more amped up when she was talking <laughs> about the research because she does some of that research. Um, many of you were able to walk around and see this campus. This is going to be quick. I'm going to go through these slides pretty fast. But if you would think about the collective vision that took this rail yard and yes, what were you saying? You were you were leaning into this. Thing. <laughs> so Brett was there and he was he was directing people <laughs> and his great work then put us where we are today. The collective vision of this community, a call to action for Washington State University. Visionary leaders working together um, have led to a build out of this health sciences campus. And what I wanted to show is that we've been very fortunate to be invested in. And you'll see that you can go back to 1989 when the they called them, I guess, the regional or urban campuses at that point. And there were three of them, Vancouver, Tri-Cities, and Spokane. You can see that very quickly, we had buildings that were put here in place. We were still operating as a higher education consortium center, as Rich Hadley mentioned this morning. But what we've evolved into is accepting the administrative responsibility for the programs that are here and a full transition into the professional programs that you see in place uh, today. So um, the programmatic needs, we wanted to assess what we really needed in priority and timelines. And we did receive uh, pre-designed money to build a building that was similar to the PDS building that pharmacy is primarily housed in. We did a master plan in 2021. What that master plan revealed to us is that we probably, that was a priority, but that was not the highest priority, that we needed to move on other priorities. And what we, have looked at is fulfilling some of these needs. We first pivoted to look for funding for the phase one building and to do the renovation so that medicine would have place, we could expand our educational footprint and actually uh, continue to modernize the education for the medical pharmacy and nursing students. But we also learned that we are going to need a health education and simulation space We've thought about this as a team health education building, because what we're trying to do with our colleagues, our younger colleagues, have them work as teams. When patients go in and need help, they know how to operate as a team. You could call it interprofessional education, but it has a, a direct overlay with team health education for team health care delivery. So we, We've looked at that. We need laboratory research space. We want space for our native program. Instead of trying to build a building, we created a native health center that is across the, the road here. And it is spectacular, folks. So if you ever have an opportunity, please go see that native health center. But we have bigger aspirations than that. Working again with the tribal nations to see what they would like and what we can step up to in partnership with them to have space in place here in this, this area. In addition, we have worked hard with the VA. We have the VA in our Spokane Teaching Health Complex. They have two primary care packs is what they call them, but we had to go through a long and elaborate process that involved our federal uh, legislators but we have the VA here on our campus. Why do we want them here? So they can provide primary care for those in need, but also to provide opportunities for our students to engage with the VA in undergraduate education that you might say for the medical students and nursing students and the pharmacy, but also graduate um, education where you see the, the continual growth of medical residency, pharmacy residencies, and nursing residencies. So I was at the pinning for nursing, and there were many things that, that impacted me to, to see those students. The number of students that were graduating from nursing and going into residency programs. We already knew this about medicine and pharmacy, 
but nursing is trending that direction as well. And having partners like the VA here only helps us. Uh, Celestina already mentioned the incubator. We are doing <coughs> traction here and we're making a difference in this environment. We are helping startup companies, we're supporting them. We're getting the name, we're getting a lot of publicity. And this is a direct offshoot of a deliberate set of efforts that we have made. So these goals, these are pretty standard goals, but we don't want to just turn this into a bunch of big buildings. That's really what this says. Okay, so spaces to meet the needs. Um, we are transitioning to phase one or EWUC building. We are seeking uh, the Ignite building and then some of the others that I've already mentioned. We won't go into details. This is to prime you to ask questions. So the first is the phase one building. These are the details, folks. So if you get a chance, look at it. The one big thing we talked about this morning is that drum that is there, that, that brick drum will probably be removed. It will open it up. It will look very different. But it's super cool. You see the description. We're very appreciative of the state doing this. Team health education. This is not a real building. It's just a mock-up. But that's kind of the building that we want in the future. That's what we're thinking about. We have to do this in partnership. And that's one thing I want you to see. For those who are able to go to the sleep center, look at all the partnerships, dozens that contributed to the build out of that sleep center. And the health sciences is committed to working with our partner organizations. So we do have a bright future. So what I would like to do is ask our three students to come up and we'll see how quickly we could do this, but Blake is going to begin. So if you can help us out, Kyle, we'll do it. Yourself. Do you prefer if I sit or stand? Stand first. Okay. Good morning. My name is Blake Ho. I'm a second year medical student at the College of Medicine's MD program um, and the uh, current student council uh, president. So I represent College of Medicine to our dean. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and get started today. So, first off, the journey. So, I grew up in a small town called Long Washington on the Key Peninsula outside of Tacoma. Um, I grew up there, a uh, large family. Uh, my dad's a builder. Uh, my mom works in Adam work and uh, my stepmom's an elementary school teacher at Vaughn Elementary. So from there, I graduated and um, I don't know if that building looks familiar in the back, but I graduated from WSU Pullman um, in the biochemistry uh, department, School of Molecular Biosciences and commissioned um, to the Air Force ROTC program before coming to WSU. Um, 905, sorry. Yeah, 905, exactly. Um, and then you can see on the right, that was right after our uh, drive through white coat ceremony um, where I started my journey here. Um, so first off, <laughs> a lot of hard work along the way. Uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, you can't fail to recognize. And this is my dog, Ruby. Um, but one of the things I've really found about the journey is the people. You can see my family up there on the left, my two youngest brothers on the right. Um, our amazing faculty, that's one of the instructors here, Dr. Johnson. He uh, is my instructor for the art and practice of medicine. He's been a mentor. He's also uh, a veteran in the Air Force, and that's us celebrating his birthday. Um, the faculty here are amazing. They really, everyone we know that comes to this institution wants to be here. Everyone came, they joined, they all drew in. And you can really feel that as a student. Like the people here care and they want to be here. Um, that's me in the middle, a little bit of snow in, uh, in January, which you can always expect here in Spokane. Um, and then my girlfriend, Brooke, um, and I met, we actually met at WC Pullman. She's a, she's a genetic cell bi biology graduate. Um, and so we met our sophomore here. And uh, so since I arrived, we started COVID University, right? So I <laughs> got my white coat in the mail, which is a little bit unique. Um, uh, I got to put it on though eventually. And uh, this is uh, a group of students and I in the virtual uh, clinical training center um, where we've really learned to hone in our patient skills. Um, learn to work together and, and really start developing the skills necessary to take care of Washingtonians. And uh, I'm a second year, so I'll be going into the clinic for the next two years and be able to go out. I'm actually homed in Spokane um, versus the other uh, campuses. And so I'd be lucky enough to stick around, um, which I do love it here. Since I've arrived, um, I've been trying to get as involved as possible. Like I mentioned, student council president has been an amazing opportunity, uh, not only to meet our amazing administrators, but to represent our students and to grow personally, um, which I've really appreciated. Um, my summer after my first year, I got I had an awesome internship 
at uh, San Antonio Military Medical Center uh, in orthopedic research. Um, and from there, I had other projects. Uh, I worked with the exercise physiology program, that's us at the American College of Sports Medicine on the bottom right, Dr. Collins and instructor Jan Coleman. Um, and then as well with a nonprofit in Tri-Cities, um, working on uh, orthopedic implants uh, for low and middle income countries. So it's been a really amazing opportunity being at the College of Medicine and getting plugged in. Also part of HOSA, uh, which works with high school students. And that's something that I feel like really, you know, draws the fuel. Um, these are students in high school that are also interested in joining the healthcare team one day, hosting suture clinics, um, providing informational sessions and mentorship. And I actually got to go back to WSU Pullman a few weeks ago and speak at the School of Molecular Biosciences Award Ceremony as the alumni speaker. Um, just to wrap things up, this is just something cool that happened now a few weeks ago, but I got to go to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio and learn how to take care of airmen and learn how to take care of our pilots. Um, it was a flight medicine course, intro course. I got to fly that aircraft. Um, I got to tour and learn about um, the healthcare of our service members. And then I also got to um, check out a upcoming uh, new base, of, which is a orthopedic spine implant uh, facility down there and tour it and check out kind of some new innovative stuff that's happening down there. So um, it's been an amazing journey. I'm super thankful that I had the opportunity to speak with you all today. Thank you for supporting us here at the College of Medicine. And so that's all I have. So thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'm a former Toastmaster, so I will not go over. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Chancellor DeWald, and of course, the Board of Regents. I'm Shona Beasy, and I'm a PhD candidate through the College of Nursing. So, you may have guessed I'm not a traditional student. I was actually a practicing nurse for 20 years before I decided it was finally the time was right for me to nurture a long held dream to become a research scientist and a PhD. And choosing to end WSU was it actually not because you're all in my backyard. I grew up, I'm a, a long, um, lifelong Spokane resident but it was actually an intentional choice because I knew that I would be able to access the expertise that I needed. Not only would I have a world-class you know, um, college of nursing, but my um, research was going to be focused on neighborhood environmental health. And so I knew having access to an agricultural, you know, you know a, a beautiful deep um, expertise from the Connors was going to be beneficial as well. So as you can tell from my PhD committee and my um, mentors, I have tapped into every resource. I have College of Medicine, I have College of Nursing, Connors, of course, and then also private industry from Providence um, supported. And because of this access to expertise, I've been able to experience over the last three years a breadth of collaboration that I would have never anticipated. For instance, one example, um, as part of my my, nurture, my training, I ended up taking a GIS course from the College of Medicine. That's part of what um, the research that I'm going to be doing. And that cascaded into an opportunity for me to partner with one of the professors from the College of Medicine on a food systems GIS mapping. That cascaded into me being able to work very um, deep in Connors and eventually even become a senior extension coordinator, which is what I do now, continuing to do my food research as an extension coordinator until I finish my PhD. And so uh, Dr. Uh, Pablo Monsivias was my, has been my long-term collaborator on this work. And um, as I said, that has been just an amazing experience. But most of all, working with the extension has opened the door to a deep and rich community partnership across the entire state that I didn't get to um, experience in my individual nursing practice. I practiced all my life here in Spokane, mostly through Providence, 18 years through Providence Health Systems. And here I've been able to partner with different communities, including the San Juan Islands. That's the project that's featured here. Not only was I able to help them with their island grown project and getting the appropriate um, collateral materials they needed, including translated into Spanish and infographics that we developed, but we also did a uh, evaluation on their program, the efficacy of their program, and I'll be presenting at the that at the National Health Research um, Association conference next week. But what really drove it home that you guys have all provided the leadership and the foundation of a college that is really going to 
nurture and set the stage for me to be able to make whatever impact I'm going to make in my life was in some of this extension work. Um, recently, because of this food um, assessment, and just so you know, the food assessment I'm doing in the wake of the COVID experience provided by the 2014 Farm, farm Bill, they're supposed to be doing an online um, pilot so that SNAP beneficiaries can actually buy groceries and have online delivery. And so I'm the one that is doing that every six month assessment, where are we at as a state and how many people, SNAP beneficiaries actually have access to that. And um, a few months ago, I was working with Dr. Monsivias and the extension reached out to us and said that a contingent of policymakers had contacted the state's extension office and wanted to be updated in order to inform the upcoming 2023 farm bill. And mine was one of three projects that had been selected to present to all the policymakers, which includes our own Kathy McMorris Rogers. And I was reflecting that night when my supervisor sent me, she goes, isn't this why we do our research? We're really impacting what's going to happen potentially even in the next year. And so thank you very much, WSU, for providing that opportunity for me. Go Cougs. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Olivia Hiskey. I am, I actually just finished my third year at pharmacy school. So I'm going to start my fourth year here in a couple of weeks on rotations. Um, a little bit of background about me. I'm a little bit of a non-traditional student. Um, I originally graduated from Western Washington University uh, with a degree in cellular and molecular biology and actually went on to become a medical laboratory scientist um, and worked in Seattle there for about three or four years um, before deciding that I really wanted a career that actually got me closer to my patients and actually had a career that I could make an impact directly with my patients. Um, so did a lot of research and decided on pharmacy that was, that was going to be the best fit for me. So I wanted to start with then why I chose specifically WSU. Um, I knew pharmacy was the path I wanted to go to, so I started to do a lot of research on multiple schools, and WSU has just always really stood out to me. Um, number one, the supportive environment that's here, especially on the health sciences campus. Um, I could tell that through just discussing interview, or interview options um, or admissions options with our staff here, um, but as well as talking to current and former students. It was amazing to understand that this is truly a community. It feels like a family. We call it a farmily, a farmily <laughs> <laughs> which I kind of laughed at first too, but really actually being able to interact with people here, it was clear how true that really was. And with that supportive environment, I saw that WSU was going to provide me with a lot of growth and development opportunities. With all this support, especially probably from staff, but faculty as well, I knew that this was going to be a school that was going to really help me achieve my dreams. Of course, there's a high quality education at WSU. We know we have that reputation, but the pharmacy program is actually really interesting. It has a very progressive learning model. So it's called active learning, um, a little bit more progressive when we think about teaching. So not as much lecture-based classes, but lots of activity-based work, um, which has really shown to be very productive and effective of teaching. And then the connection to the community, WSU has hands down one of the largest connections in the Spokane community in multiple areas. So I knew I was going to get that community outreach that I was looking for. So really what I've been able to do here at WSU, um, has it's been really widespread. So pretty much anything that I've had an interest in, I've had a support to be able to pursue that. Um, one of the first things I was interested in coming in here, you know, I was a medical lab scientist before. Uh, so I really was interested in research and I got a ton of support from my professors to pursue really whatever I was interested in. Um, so I started doing some wet lab research, some bench research on drug development, which was very interesting and fun. Um, got to see really what that entailed and what kind of what it took to do that. Um, but then decided, you know, my focus was a little bit more clinical. Um, and so I actually became part of the honors research program. Um, so I get to graduate um, basically with like a thesis or capstone type project. Um, and I'm specifically because of COVID uh, looking into telehealth and how our telehealth has impacted our care, um, specifically with outpatient pharmacy. It also leads to a lot of scholarship opportunities as well. I've been able to present at multiple national meetings, um, as well as attend lots of meetings um, as well. And I've also partnered with professors um, with special interests of mine, including public health and substance use disorder, um, to co-create new electives that I've been able to co-teach as well. 
WSU has provided a lot of leadership opportunities for me. Um, I currently serve as our student chapters, American Pharmacists Association Academy of Student Pharmacists. I know it's a mouthful. Um, I'm the patient care vice president there. Um, so I've been able to really manage my patient care team to be able to continue to um, really carry out our community outreach and involvement uh, here in Spokane, but as well as reestablish some connections that are, were difficult to keep during COVID. And then lastly, with community outreach, it's really just been the cornerstone of what I wanted to do here um, through vaccination clinics, COVID testing, um, as well as educational programs for the community around substance use disorder and naloxone. Um, we've really been able to expand our community outreach and create some new community partners as well. So really what WSU has provided me is a long lasting impact that has really shaped I know my future as a person, but as well as a healthcare provider. So through my experiences with WSU, I've really become passionate about public health and substance use disorder and hope to practice with an underserved population, um, specifically around mental health and substance use disorder. And that's really been able to be fueled and carried on through my experiences here. So I have a couple of photos I thought were kind of fun. So up here on the top, I have a legislative, uh, our legislative day photo. So we got to go to Olympia and actually speak to legislators about pushing through um, some pharmacy uh, legislation that would help support us a little bit more in our practice. I was also lucky enough before COVID to um, travel to New York to the American College of Clinical Pharmacy annual meeting um, my first year um, and present a poster as well as um, just be able to network and interact with more pharmacy professionals. Um, I was also part of doing the return to school COVID-19 testing in Pullman um, last January, um, specifically for the Greek life I run in Pullman. Um, we were able to test over six or 600 students um, in the two days that we were there. I also have been a part of lots of vaccination clinics, obviously influenza, but COVID as well. Um, and at this clinic specifically, we were at a preschool center where we were able to vaccinate over 115 pediatric patients um, as well as their parents. And lastly, I love this photo over here on the other on the bottom. Um, this is that Mobius Discovery Center. This is one of our new novel um, collaborative community partners, and we were able to provide a health and wellness series, series to them um, every week in February. Um, this last February. So it's a collaboration that was brand new. Um, we got to work with the Mobius CEO to kind of come up with exactly what they were looking for. Um, and it's really going to be a partnership we're going to be able to continue. So overall, I hope that really shows kind of the impact that WSU um, has brought to me. And I just really appreciate my time here. Thank you. Isn't it cool that we're all part of the family? <laughs> <laughs> so please, if you would, um, recognize our student leaders, these servant leaders. Yeah. And we really are, I'm going to skip through this. We've already talked about buildings. Um, what I would like to leave you with is we're considering our vision for the future. We're embracing the new budget. We're looking at opportunities for authority and responsibility, but I'm going to leave you with this last slide. This is what Celestina had referred to before, and I've talked with folks about this, but each of those dots is a separate formal connection with a provider, a clinic, a laboratory, or a research organization across the state. When you peel them back, there's more than a thousand dots. So that gives a little bit of a pictorial representation of what you heard these students and their faculty colleagues are doing together. Yeah, we're proud to have them as colleagues and for us to be colleagues with them. But the next phase, in my opinion, of WSU's growth will in part depend upon the continued growth of the health sciences. So thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you very much, colleagues, for presenting today. Much appreciated. And here is just a, a, a written overview of what we consider WSU health. And it is aspirational, but we'd be glad to take any questions or go stage right. Each <laughs> <laughs> Dickinson. Thank you. Just outstanding presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just real quick. Um, with the meetings we had this morning with the community leaders and the like, um, the presence of both you and Celestine in the community is really remarkable. And the feedback I got from them, just want to congratulate you on not only implementing that vision, but 
what the campus, what health sciences know means to the community here in the downtown is going to be just remarkable. Thank you. And I would call out that we have a whole team of people. We understand our need to not turn and look inside and look at each other, but to turn around and extend and not only look, but extend hand up. So to work with external stakeholders. So we have a culture of doing that. And we have great leaders who do that, whether they are on our kind of our leadership team or they're the students, they get it. So thank you, Regent Blanchett. Thank you. And we'll get out of your way. There's a lot of business, but we wanted you to be encouraged that all the hard business you're doing is actually building great yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I just wanted to thank you for your leadership and just tell you that I think um, what we saw this morning in terms of community partnerships, what we're hearing and as we took a tour of the um, spaces and the way in which those spaces are being utilized as we're listening to students and the impact that they're going to continue to have in our community, um, that it is um, so important for us to recognize Tone from the top and um, the work that you're doing, Chancellor Ewald. And so I just wanna take a moment to say thank you and to appreciate your leadership today. So um, thank you. Yes, I just um, echo those comments. Um, I think that getting to hear from students might be the most meaningful thing that the regents get to do. It just, I mean, not that I don't like hearing from her, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me way too much. I just, it, it just, I think on so many levels beyond Washington State University, it gives you such a great sense of hope and energy and um, perspective around um, the various journeys that people travel. So from Shauna, from your very non-traditional journey, I mean, kudos to having the courage um, to just, and be fearless to go back into doing something like this after you've kind of been set. And Blake, you just love your path with ROTC and Pullman and um, WSU's campus is lucky to have you as a student council leader. And I'm assuming orthopedic must be kind of your focal point. <laughs> and Olivia, thank you for coming back to the family and um, good luck with your rotation and in the next, next year. But uh, again, one last round for a really amazing morning for WSU Spokane. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. segue into just again being inspired um, and also I think for this particular um, past year for our board of regents to have um, our student regent Shane Wright serve. Um, he's just been such a um, an outstanding voice and Shane I just want you to take away knowing that your voice has really mattered this past year and your graciousness to um, be open and allow all of us to learn and understand um, all things better. And um, you are going to be missed on this board of regents. You have made a difference this past year. So I want to be able to turn it to President Schultz as we, this is his last meeting with us. We're always just so blessed with wonderful student regents, but I'm gonna just say this might be my favorite. So um, yeah. um, just your friendship has really, um, matter and it's important so thank you oh um shane thank you for your service as our student region i wrote down just a, a couple things uh my first overall comment was quiet but mighty uh, i really do appreciate your thoughtful comments and insights and often you'll sit there and take in all kinds of information and i think i put down here you always ask great questions yes. You know, at the end, after putting it all together, it's not a surface question. It's always one that requires some analysis and some real thought. And then I, I just want to call out and acknowledge you've been a strong advocate for equity in our decision making. And almost all the time, at the end of the day, you'll bring that back up appropriately and say, I just need to understand where this is in our decision making. And I appreciate your advocacy uh, on, on behalf of all of our students. And uh, being a student region, I think is really difficult because you've got to balance sometimes these different perspectives. And I think you really pulled it off extremely well. You got a bright future ahead of you. Thank you for your service to WSU. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been so wonderful to serve with all of you. And just, yeah, just an incredible opportunity. And I'm very grateful for this space and for being heard.
Well, we recognize that it is challenging at times to be a student regent because you're going to school. In your case, you have two beautiful daughters, a partner at home, I think five baby chicks and chickens. <laughs> it's a lot going on. So a move here and there, you are you know, working hard to um, find the right place to land as you um, work through your final pieces of education. So I would like to do um, a res read a formal resolution um, uh, on your behalf from the governor. So whereas on July 1st, 2021, Governor Jay Inslee appointed Shane Wright as the student regent of Washington State University. And whereas on June 30th, 2022, Regent Wright will complete their term on the board of the regents with distinction. And whereas Regent Wright carried out their responsibilities with considerable thoughtfulness, enthusiasm, and loyalty to the students and the entire university community. And whereas Regent Wright has served as a passionate persuasive advocate and voice for all WSU students and always represented the university in a positive, professional and competent manner. And whereas while serving as on the board of Regent, while serving as on the board, Regent Wright has been an exemplary and generous citizen of the university giving willing of their time and talents while endeavoring to advance the university's efforts to serve the public good and community statewide. And whereas Regent Wright has earned the gratitude, admiration, and respect of their board of colleagues and the students throughout the WSU system for their unwavering devotion and love for the university. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Shane Wright be commended for the dedication and service to Washington State University and to the board of regents and be it further resolved that the members of the Board of Regents of Washington State University, speaking on behalf of the entire Cougar Nation, acknowledge with sincere gratitude and appreciation the contributions of Shane Wright and wish them success in all future endeavors. Congratulations. This is always so awkward. Okay. 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 Okay, we are formally moving into our consent agenda. Um, we have one item um, on our consent agenda before us today. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We have three items. Three items. I was going to say, yeah, count one, two, three. So um, the first one is actually the approval of minutes from March 11th, um, 2022, Board of uh, Regents meeting. The second one is to establish the Master Healthcare Administration and Leadership. And the third is to discontinue the Master of Education in Educational Psychology. Uh, would any regents like to remove any of the pieces from the consent agenda at this time? Okay, hearing none, we will continue to move forward. I move to approve the consent agenda and I'm asking for a second. Second. Thank you, Laura. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of this motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we are officially moving into um, our shared governance uh, reports from our various groups. The first one will be from our Foundation Board of Governors, Don Shearer, who is here representing my colleague. Welcome, Don. <clears throat> Good morning. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present the WSU Foundation's report to the Board of Regents this morning. I'm Don Shearer. I'm the Senior Vice President with the WSU Foundation. Um, Mike Connell, our Vice President of Advancement and CEO of the WSU Foundation, sends his regrets that he's not able to um, provide this report in person today. 
He's asked me to express his sincere appreciation for all this board accomplishes on behalf of WSU. Uh, I'm pleased and honored to be able to report things are going very well and that our philanthropic activities do to the, our donors' great um, investment in the institution, their belief in the, in the mission, and the hard work of the advancement team and academic leadership across the institution. As of this morning, uh, we were just shy of $126 million a year to date. And by this time, I'm sure we've surpassed that number. So uh, <laughs> that uh, puts us about $4 million um, to our goal. We have a little over eight weeks left to make our goal for this year of $130 million. I'm very confident that we'll, that we'll reach that goal and surpass it. And we're headed towards our best year in uh, philanthropic donations since the end of our last campaign. Just last month alone, we saw some remarkable, remarkable investments uh, in the institution from our generous alumni, donors, friends, and corporate partners. Just some examples was on April 13th, we had our Coogs Give Day. We received gifts in excess of $791,000. That's our, our best Coogs Day for as dollars raised in our history of the program. We had over 1,300 gifts, individual gifts and it impacted every college and campus in the WSU system. And, with, and the donors impacted over 100 different designated funds within the institution. Uh, on April 18th, the uh, President mentioned it already today, a landmark gift the university received from Ed and Dietrich Schweitzer of $10 million, matched by the, the company that Dr. Schweitzer uh, started, um, Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, of another $10 million for a new building on the WSU Pullman campus, Schweitzer Engineering Hall. When this building opens, it will, it will house collaborative spaces for students, student groups to work together, uh, advising spaces, and, and a place for students to come together and work on projects. Um, we're very appreciative of the Schweitzer's and Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories and further investment in the mission of the university. And just last week, the WSU Foundation hosted our spring meeting in Seattle. We brought together the WSU Foundation Board of Directors, the Board of Advocates, and the Advocates of Maritime. Some of the focus of the meeting was the important work that the Advocates Task Force are doing in areas of volunteer engagement with WSU, communication, volunteer training, diversity recruitment and nominations, and optimi optimizing the role of advocates and the Advocates of Maritime. The work that these task forces are doing will, will help us as we prepare for the campaign. We also recognize the most generous donors to WSU at the 2021, I'm sorry, 2022, the 42nd annual uh, recognition gala. That was a, a, a wonderful evening where we got to show our, our deep appreciation for folks who made an incredible impact on the institution. The WSU Foundation Board of Directors meets next on September 28th to the 30th on the Pullman campus for the annual fall meeting. And we're deep in the, in the into campaign planning for the, the campaign that we, we started counting for on um, July 1st of this last year. Uh, we will have our counting policies sewed up and ready to present to President Schultz and um, Provost Chilton early next week. And this summer, we're undertaking a, a process working with all the campuses and colleges and uh, units on identifying the priorities for the campaign. You know, It'll take us about three months to work through that through that effort. And we're looking forward to really starting to move the needle in our campaign plan. Any questions for me? Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thanks for all you do. Great board meeting. Um, just a great momentum there. It's a good time to be part of the WSU Foundation. Thank you. Okay, next up we have our faculty senate chair, Doug. Oh. Nice tie, Doug. Right, right. Great. <laughs> yeah, to see, yes, to see everybody in person. You usually have a lovely Hi. picture with the river running through it yeah. behind you. Indeed, indeed. So. Headed there soon, so I'll, I'll, let you, I'll send you pictures. Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to me. Uh, again, this will be a fairly short, brief report. Uh, the faculty senate has been very busy. Uh, we've met twice since the last report that I gave to you, which included 
uh, passage of the uh, Masters in Healthcare Administration and Leadership um, Program that you just voted on. Uh, I would just like to say, and personally, I find it would be one of our more innovative pieces of uh, programs that's come through lately. It shows a lot of really um, creative innovation for uh, post-baccalaureate education for the state, and uh, so happy to see that move forward. On uh, March 24th, Chancellor DeWald and um, Craig Parks, Vice Provost for System Innovation and Policy, um, uh, made a presentation to the Faculty Senate about the Yakima Consortium, and I want to thank uh, in particular Chancellor Duvall for remaining on call, ready to answer any questions, and the high degree of, uh, of uh, transparency in that effort led to a unanimous supported uh, resolution on April 7th at the Faculty Senate. I want to do a shout out to Provost Chilton and Vice President for Finance Administration, Stacey Pearson, for their continuing efforts to educate us about the new proposed RCM model. It's working very well. It's really lowering the temperature in the room. People are getting it. Uh, it's a lot of detail. Um, you guys are doing lovely presentations, not only to the Faculty Senate. I have one this week I got to attend one to the um, uh, Regents faculty as well. And you've had, I think, at least three other public sessions since in, in all that period of time as well. Um, it's looking good. Thank you. Uh, changes in faculty leadership. Uh, Dr. Eric Sheldon, Associate Professor of School of Molecular Biosciences, has been elected as our new chair elect. As of um, August 15th, I will be moving to past chair. Uh, Dave Turnbull will be moving off of uh, faculty executive. And uh, Christine Horn will become the new chair, and she'll be doing these reports for you next year. And the only other uh, major item that I wanted to point out is that uh, thanks to the uh, passage in the state legislature and signage by the governor, we we're able to move very quickly in implementing a plan for moving nominations forward for the faculty region for the board. And our uh, nominations, which include all four past um, representatives, has now been moved forward to the, the governor's office. And I understand paperwork is in motion. And so we hope to have somebody in place uh, for your October meeting, if, if depending on how that works through the legislative process. So. I'm not sure. Any questions I can answer for you? Thank you for serving. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure. Very, very nice to work with you. So maybe I'll just ask Regent Redmond's question. It's um, you know graduation yeah. moment, and uh, it's been a it's been a tough year. What's the morale like? I'm improving. I can say that was certainly partly because we are at the end of the year. <laughs> and, and, and the end is in sight. Yes, it's here. And as um, as the president pointed out, it is time for us to take a deep breath, do some reflection. Um, we learned a lot. Uh, we I think our uh, our capacity for delivering and innovation, delivering products, delivering education, uh, interacting with students has expanded dramatically. And our better understanding of how to do that from the COVID experience has actually pushed us in ways. That, uh, I don't think. So it's been a very positive development. Um, a lot of policies have evolved, and we continue to have those conversations. Um, so I think uh, I think things are. I, mean, I think we're going to be really ready for the fall. I'm looking forward to it. I just want to convey my deep gratitude for all of the work of the faculty and um, the continued efforts to. I think Ellen Taylor said it yesterday that uh, we want to be able to have our students be seen, and our faculty is our front line to see our students and. Um, to adapt and pivot and continually try to accommodate what is needed in the classroom and to meet those student needs. And so just appreciate the work that you're doing. And I know that the summers are those times to refresh. So hopefully you'll do that as well. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Apologies that a bio break prevented me from saying your entire report, but I did want to commend you on your leadership. Um, you have been enormously helpful to the leadership at WSU in the sense that, you know, you give us advance warning if we need to pull together some information and make sure we're getting information back. Um, you help us think through sort of how we can use data to inform some of our explanations. You know, it's, it's fine to give anecdotal responses to questions, but to have data to back them up and I just really want to thank you for your partnership. It's been enormously helpful in our efforts to support WSU and our students back in the side. Okay. Thank you, Don. All right, next up we have our ASWSU UHS. Well, I just have the great pleasure of meeting Sam, President yes. 
Sam and Sam, can, I don't want to um, mistake. Can you pronounce your last name? Yeah, uh, Nahulu. Nahulu. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. And no do problem. we have Karen or Kiana Lee with us? No, not okay. today. So I'll just be giving the report today. That's okay. That's awesome. Um, but hello, everyone. My name is Sammy Nahulu. I am the current ASWC Health Sciences President. I am also a third year pharmacy student. I'm about to go into my fourth year. So yes, I'm also a part of that family that Olivia, <laughs> Olivia was talking about earlier. Uh, but so grateful to be here and, you know, very, very happy to share some of the goals that we were able to kind of go through this past year. So I'm just going to go through the goals that we had this past year and go up to a little bit more depth about each goal that we had. So our first goal this year was to implement a student lounge in the health sciences building basement, which is that building right over there. Uh, goal number two was to restart the, tra the tradition of hosting the WC Health Sciences Health Fair. And then goal number three was to engage students on campus help students transition back into in-person learning and also advocate for students' program specific concerns. So going back to goal number one, so uh, to implement a student lounge in the health sciences building basement. So this is something that we kind of wanted to do uh, during the summer when Kiana and I first uh, transitioned into our president and vice president positions. We were thinking about having a, an area where students can kind of relax, can kind of uh, de-stress from you know, the stressors of school and all of that, you know, being in a health sciences program is a pretty difficult thing to be uh, uh, to be a part of. And so we want to provide, provide that for our students, something like that for our students. Um, and we also went to WC Tri-Cities. We got to see the student union building that they had there. And it was very, very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our SEC meetings in there. And so um, seeing the amount of like students that were having fun, they were playing pool, they were playing video games. We kind of wanted to have something like that, a space like that in our campus. And so uh, that's kind of the concept that our Senate voted on. Uh, in the top right, as you can see there, there's like a ping pong table there uh, in the basement, um, something that we're hoping to implement uh, within the next few years. And so uh, that's something we're really proud of. And then goal number two was to restart the, the tradition of hosting the WC Health Sciences Health Fair. So prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, WCU or ASWCU was very involved with the community. We would partner up with our community partners and uh, also partner up with the local elementary school. Uh, so that elementary school was Francis Ellen Scott Elementary this year. And so we uh, got to collaborate with our different student RSOs on campus and uh, provide free health screenings, uh, provide uh, immunizations, the so COVID-19 immunizations and stuff like that. Uh, and then our health screenings also include like blood pressure screenings and then blood glucose. And then Olivia, that was just here earlier, earlier uh, was that actually helped a lot with that, played a big part in making this thing a success. Uh, so kudos to her and uh, yeah. And then the third was to engage students on campus. So we had a lot of uh, tabling events this past year. Uh, we actually had a tabling event this past Tuesday where we gave out donuts to our students, uh, tried to engage with them and also celebrate our gra graduates uh, in the class of 2022. And then we also wanted to re-engage with our students a lot more. We had more accessible office hours in person and online this past year. Um, and we'd also seek out program specific concerns from students and try to arrange meetings with uh, you know, different deans of the different colleges. And I also met with Chancellor DeWalt a lot myself this past year. Uh, but these were our main goals that we had this past year. Uh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. And if you have any questions for me, I'd love to take them right now. So, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Questions for Sam? So when you finish, where do you hope to be? Uh, so I'm from the state of Hawaii. Uh, so hopefully back at home in Hawaii. Um, and then hopefully doing a residency back at home. But we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. Enjoy snow for seven months of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I was here in Spokane for quite a bit of time. So I've been here for five years already. I went to undergrad at Whitworth University. Oh, yeah. So. I think I've had my first year. <laughs> I think I had enough of snow, so I think I'm ready for the beach again. <laughs> um, I did love my I do love my time here at WSU. I love the pharmacy program, but yeah. What's the work that you have to go into? What's the next step if you have kind of designed your student lounge? What comes next? Uh, figuring out budgets. So I think we just actually got like our budget um, a couple of weeks ago from uh, Kendra, yeah. uh, which is the person we're working with. And so figuring that out, and then uh, I think we're going to like pass this down to next year's president and vice president. <laughs> so uh, yeah, super excited for this.
Oh, thanks, Ping Pong. We had much needed relief after uh -huh. the court yeah. that some of you guys are taking. Yeah, we actually, there was actually a split vote in the Senate. It was between Ping Pong and a pool table. <laughs> so <laughs> they were, uh, yeah, they, it was it was really the, the decisive, that. our divisive in that. Could you both. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? That's it. That's it. Ping Pong yeah. table one month and yes. then the pool table the next month. <laughs> well, thank you, Sam, and yeah. good luck to you in your uh, your uh, next, you're doing rotations, correct? Correct, yes, I actually start rotations in two weeks at Providence Sacred Heart. Oh, so, lucky then. Yeah, super Great. excited. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Next up, we have our um, GPSA Vancouver president, <coughs> Rianne Chilton. Hi, Hi there. Uh, Rianne is uh, with us via Zoom. So nice to see you. Hi all, thanks so much. My name is Rayanne Chilton. Uh, I am the president of the GPSA in Pullman. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, share an update. Uh, this year has been a really exciting uh, and interesting one filled with some challenges of getting back to a lot of our programs that we had to uh, change up or not do in the last pre couple of years. Um, but we've had some really cool work that we've got to do. Um, we hosted our biweekly Senate meetings throughout the year, getting to wrap those up uh, with an honored guest, uh, VP for Student Affairs, Ellen Taylor. Um, at those meetings, over 50 graduate and professional students representing different units around the university come and collaborate. They hear about student services available to them so that they can disseminate that information to uh, their departments uh, and uh, discuss initiatives and advocacy efforts. Um, I want to congratulate our incoming executive board. I'm very excited. We have a full executive board all lined up and ready to go. Uh, so the incoming president, Samantha Edgerton, who uh, has served as a, the vice president in the past, is very experienced. Um, we're excited to bring her on as president. Uh, uh, my distinguished powerhouse of a colleague, Marwa Ali, uh, and mother of four, uh, staying on as a VP. She's been responsible for the incredible initiatives around uh, expanding childcare access this year that we're so proud of. Uh, and then also welcoming AJ Barman as our uh, Vice President of Legislative Affairs. Really excited to see the advocacy that he does. Uh, just a couple of things that we're excited about, um, proud of, uh, those uh, we're sending out care packages to our research and extension centers, uh, making sure that we're really uh, caring for those uh, centers and incorporating them has been uh, a big effort for GPSA this year and in the previous years as well. Um, they oftentimes don't have quite the same access to resources, so we try to make sure that we're supplementing where we can, so we're sending them some care packages for uh, finals week. Um, also, like I mentioned, really uh, proud of the child care initiatives that we've uh, piloted this year. They've been really successful uh, and popular, uh, so we're looking to continue them next year and hopefully even expand them. Uh, uh, also, uh, we got to have our full research expo in person, uh, which is one of our most popular programs. We do this uh, it's sort of in collaboration with Academic Showcase, uh, and uh, our element of it, the research expo, is a competition. So uh, we got to select, uh, the faculty judges uh, volunteered to help us select the top research posters uh, in each field. Uh, and uh, this is an honor that students are, you know, it means a lot to students uh, to be able to participate in this. <clears throat> we also did our excellence awards. Uh, we had 150 nominations for our various awards, um, and we got to shine a spotlight on uh, graduate and professional students who have distinguished themselves in various ways, either as researchers, instructors, uh, teachers, uh, leadership, uh, engagement, service work, that sort of thing. Uh, and we got to co-host with the graduate school our evening of excellence to really honor these students uh, and celebrate them, which is a wonderful way to wrap up the year. 
Uh, also, I'll just uh, highlight uh, a couple of our ongoing programs, uh, the Professional Development Initiative, a collaboration with the Graduate School, had some wonderful uh, PDI events uh, this year. I think our final one was a seminar on leadership uh, by uh, Karen DePalm. Uh, and uh, also really proud of our programming. This has been a year where um, being able to form those social connections has been uh, really important. So uh, getting to do our ice cream socials and our restaurant week and our book club have been just really fun. So thank you and uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Rianne, very much. Um, I just would like to say on behalf of the Regents, thank you for just staying connected to our research and extension programs. That's, it, that's important and we appreciate you putting that at the forefront. Questions for Rianne at this time? Other than maybe you could give us a list of books you guys have read in your book club. <laughs> Those would be good books, I would imagine. Yes, oh gosh. Uh... I'm going to have to send you a list because uh, the Thank names you. are escaping me. That's okay. Yeah, maybe you can send it to Desiree. It would be great. Wonderful. I will. Okay. Well, thank you for serving. You've done a nice job representing um, the GPS thing. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we have our Administrative Professional Advisory Council President, Anna McLeod. And Anna will be coming to us as well via Zoom. Hi, yes, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for the time today. Um, I have a fairly short report. Um, as the rest of my fellow um, leaders here, uh, this will be my last report for the Board of Regents as I will be uh, cycling off as chair of APAC. Um, I have been honored to serve uh, for the last two years, um, but I'm very excited for um, our upcoming executive team. Um, they will be officially voted in um, here in a couple weeks. Uh, so we'll have new members uh, the next time uh, the Board of Regents meets. Um, so for my report today, um, I would just like to give a shout out to um, our winners of our AP Contribution Award. Uh, we held our award ceremony on April 14th. Um, we had um, about 100 um, attendees. Uh, via Zoom and in person in Pullman. Um, I was very um, lucky to be able to go over and um, award um, these awards to our fellow um, APs. Um, and a thank you to Provost Chilton for also being there and helping me um, recognize and celebrate um, the contributions of our winners. Um, the six individuals that we uh, recognized were from across the WSU system, including um, a couple members of research and extension locations. Um, so we were excited to have um, nominations from across the system as well as winners. Um, as I mentioned, um, the APAC elections will be held uh, May 18th. Uh, we do have 18 positions to fill on our council. Um, that is the most positions we've had in the last few years. Um, we have a 30 member council, so it's over half. Um, we were lucky to get nine applications for those 18 spots. We're happy with that and are moving forward. And hopefully as we move into summer and um, people are able to take a little bit of time to refresh and relax, we might have more interest in the fall. Um, so we're looking forward to having um, a new council um, this next uh, academic year and moving forward um, with our strategic plan. Um, so just thank you so much for the opportunity for um, being here and supporting um, the staff and students and faculty at WSU. And um, that is my report. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for um, serving APAC and WSU. What comes next for you personally, Anna? Yeah, so that's a great question. I will be able to just really focus on my job. Um, not that I wasn't able to to um, do both, um, but I'm excited to have um, some time to do some new adventures at WSU Everett. Um, when you guys were on campus, um, we had our career fair uh, for the first time, and that was wonderful. And I was so able that I was able to, uh, happy I was able to host that and put that together. So I'm hoping to do, um, have some time to do some more events like that to support our students um, in Everett. Excellent. Well, thank you and best of luck to you and we'll see you in Everett again. Great, thank you. Welcome.
Okay, next up we have our Alumni Association and we have President Shelley Spangler and it gets to be here in person, so that is so great. I just had this sickening realization of how big I was projected on the screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for having us here today. Um, it's always such a joy to get to come and highlight some of the happenings coming out of the Lewis Alumni Center every time. Um, I'll start with the, an update on the search for our next executive um, director, and it remains on track, um, unsurprisingly. We are um, seeing a lot of really good interest in this opportunity, and the search firm that we're engaged with, Isaacson Miller, is currently um, connecting with strong candidates. They're vetting those candidates and plan to narrow that pool um, and start the next stage of in-person interviews, likely by the end of the month. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, the next update has to do with some fun programming coming up. So in partnership with President Schultz and Vice Pro Provost for Enrollment Management, Saichi Oba, sorry, it's a mouthful, uh, the WCUA's newest initiative is called Cougar Cubs. So um, basically we're welcoming kids that love WCU into that Cougar family as early as we can get them, right? Um, so, right, exactly. We're going, we're going straight from, from uh, the hospital to, to them coming to college here. Um, there's no shame in it, guys. There's no shame at all. So it's a kids only program, obviously designed to recognize that youngest uh, tier of our Cougar community. So um, children under 11 are eligible for the program. And so alumni, donors, friends, faculty, anybody associated with the university um, can honor a young aspiring Coug to be um, through this initiative. And that Coug to be will get a welcome letter and a certificate and making it official. And then the crimson and gray pressure begins, right? We, we get them here in style. Um, the next update I have is one of the best things that I think we get to do all year, which is the top 10 senior awards. Um, and that program dates back, I didn't know this, almost 80 years, I think, to the early 1900s. And so our um, alumni association, student alumni ambassadors are the caretakers of that program. Um, the program, if you don't know, recognizes the top 10 um, students in five categories across the WCU system for their outstanding achievements throughout the year. Um, this year's recipients include in academics, Forrest Furrington and Annie Liu, in athletics, Michaela Bearlova and Chloe Larson. For campus involvement, Jocelyn Renados Mejia and Nolan Thomaswick for community service, Lindsay Gass and Aiden Minor, and in visual and performing arts, Cameron Barton and Christina Navarro. Um, I think in the link in the materials, there's all the bios, but I think it's featured on the homepage and on social media throughout the week. So if you get a chance, um, just again, uplifting, amazing, inspiring students that we have. Um, and then my last update is for you all about changes in our board structure. Um, so Tomorrow, follow scene uh, on the spring commencement is when we do our switch over in, in our board structure for our executive committee. And so um, our incoming vice president is Katie Kane. She's a 2014 graduate of our WCU Global Campus, which is really exciting. Um, Katie lives in Morgan Hill, California, and she is the director of technical program management for Walmart. Um, our president elect is Lester Barbero. Lester is a 2010 graduate. He's a mechanical engineer and lives in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, and then, as for myself, um, I will be transitioning out of my <coughs> as president of the Alumni Association. So I wanted to take a moment to thank the board for allowing me to come here and get to update you on the best darn alumni association in the universe. Um, it's been a pretty dynamic year. Um, we had certainly the joys of returning to in-person events um, and the feeling of being able to plan for the future was really nice. Um, there's some bittersweet stuff. Uh, Tim Pavish's um, retirement announcement after 18 years certainly, but I want to thank you all for your continued support of the Alumni Association and to just know that being of service to this organization and to this amazing university has been one of the greatest honors of my life. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to our next president, Mark Schuster. Um, thanks, Shelley. And I, I'll first, I got to start with thank you for the, your service as, as president. Um, Shelley's amazing as you've got to know her, her knowledge and her skill and her uh, great sense of humor and your, your passion for the Cougs. It's been a pleasure to, to, to serve with you, right? So, and I, I know this is hard for you as well, too. We, we laugh. We get we get emotional during our alumni association <laughs> meetings sometimes because we just care so darn much about the, the Cougs. But I'll, I'll do a quick intro myself. Again, Mark Schuster. Um, I'm, uh, I was born and raised and, and still live in Richland, Washington. 
1995 uh, graduate of WSU with a finance degree, and I'm a Platinum Life uh, member of the Alumni Association. So I'm currently the Vice President of Global Operations for Lamb Weston. Um, now you may not have had, heard of Lamb Weston, um, but we're the biggest French fry producer in North America, the second biggest in the world. So if you've ever had a French fry, you've probably had ours. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. And order an extra order next time, yeah, you, you get some, right? So, um, so a little bit of my kook story, and I think that's we talk about alumni. That's important. We talk about that because uh, alumni association is about that cougar spirit, right? So it's always interesting to hear about. How did you get to your cougar? How did you get to your cook story? And you know, I'm one of those um, that was raised a cook. Um, my oldest brother in the early '80s had a chance to go to WSU and play football for WSU, so that kind of got me hook, line, sinker, and, and led to my first cougar memory, which was 1982 um, Apple Cup. Um, Huskies came to, to Pullman for the first time in 28 years um, after Martin Stadium, Stadium renovation. I think the Huskies were ranked like number five or something like that. Well. Cougs won, right? So, and, and uh, as fans and alumni and students and everybody's, um, you know, um, uh, getting onto the field, tearing down the goalposts, parading them through town. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this thing with big eyes saying, this place is awesome, right? You know, <laughs> and so even as a 10 year old in the stands, I'm going, man, Cougs love being Cougs, okay. right? And I learned that early on and that has stuck with me my, my, my whole life. Had two other older brothers that also went to WSU and then I had the opportunity to, to go to WSU and also play on the football team. And my wife is a, is a um, WSU grad of the College of Education and played on the golf team. So um, we are Coug, right? And, and that hasn't changed after graduation. Um, still stay very involved with WSU, do a lot of volunteering for the Cougar Athletic Fund. And of course, with the, the WSU Alumni Association. So being a, been a big part of my life, and I'm completely honored to be able to be president of the Alumni Association, such a great organization, represent that organization and the staff and our almost 45,000 members. So I'm totally honored um, by that. As I, as I look at the next year, a couple of things that come to my mind, and Shelly referenced um, new executive director search uh, going on. So it's going to be um, really important um, for me in this role and, and the whole team to, to get that person hired on board and, and, and set them up for success. And, and um, it was interesting. I just learned this, that this is only the, this will be the fifth executive director the alumni associations had in 82 years. Um, so that's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. So and that says a lot about the organization. It says a lot about Cougs going back, way back, right? This isn't Coug, uh, being, a, being love being a Coug. It's not just a new phenomenon. It's been going on on, on forever. And, and like she said, the search firm has given us great reports about, hey, this is a really desirable job. And there's lots of reasons for that. First of all, the candidates know they get to work with coops. Right? <laughs> so that, that's first and foremost. And it's well known how awesome coops are and how engaged they are and enthusiastic they are. Um, number two, they, the candidates know they have an awesome staff already at the Alumni Association. And I'm, you know, I can say with great confidence that the, as, as good as it gets in the industry, they're their knowledge and their skill and their creativity and their just effort. Um, and, and, and again, there is nobody that loves the Coops more than that, that staff. So they know they're getting that. And then we're also an alumni association that's growing. And, and you know, we're almost 45,000 members now. We've grown our content and our, our events and, and, our, and our numbers. So um, that's well known throughout the industry as well too. So very confident we're gonna get a great um, candidate. And again, that'll be important for us to, to onboard them on and, and, and get them um, ingrained into everything WSU. A couple other things is oh, we're gonna continue to, to support one WSU. Uh, we, have, we have 52 chapters and which includes five multicultural chapters all across the country. Um, we do have one in Hawaii, an awesome chapter in Hawaii. So, yeah. so they, they do great things there. So you, they'll, they'll be waiting for you. Trust me. <laughs> and and um, but, but how do we? How do we? That's such an amazing group of volunteers and events and activities and engagement. How do we continue to use our team um, and uh, volunteers and staff to continue to engage across all the campuses? And something I'm really proud of is our board is well represented by all the campuses. And, and Shelley referenced Katie, right? Global campus. Katie's a diehard coup man. It's awesome, right? And we have almost all the campuses represented by our by our board, and I think that's really positive. So we're going to continue to see how we strengthen that. And last, just uh, top of mind for for next year is how do we support um, the foundation? We know there's a high correlation between what the, the WSU Alumni Association does 
and the success of the foundation. And so um, we're going to be working real close with Mike and his team, how we continue to strengthen that because we can continue to help each other out as we continue to look at the vision of WSU. So um, again, super excited to be here again. Thank you, Shelly. I can't thank you enough. Um, I tell Shelly I'm glad our Cougar pass crossed, right? And that's a great thing about being as a Cougar is we get all these paths that cross and you become friends for life, right? For shared common experience. So um, I look forward to engaging with this, with this group over the, the, the coming year. And I've always got to end with a go coup. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any questions? questions? Just um, good luck on your year. And if you get to present to us in person, bring French fries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull up the fry wagon outside, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> yes, Just like, you know, Shelly, I appreciate your energy and your enthusiasm. I always come away much more energized. And I think you can write the book on how to be the best alum. So Thank think you. about that in your future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just one quick comment. Uh, thank you for everything. And uh, welcome to the new position. And I was at that 82 game. And the best thing about it is that we knocked the Huskies out of the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I failed to mention that, but that was awesome. <laughs> Mark, just uh, before you leave very quickly, most people may not realize Lamb Weston's played a major role in helping with our food bank on the Tri-Cities campus. Mm -hmm. And financially, all kinds of other ways, maybe a 30 second snippet on that, because that has really led the way through the system on some of the work that you all have done. I appreciate that opportunity. Yeah, um, you know, we got we got working with the um, campus in, in WSU and, and Lamb Weston is a, a big employer in the Tri-Cities. We have a lot of our production facilities there and and we work, we, they came, we started working together, started talking about it. We're big on food security. We are a food company and that's really, really important to us. And so when we started learning more about the campus and the food insecurity of those students, I'll be honest, our eyes became wide open. I think it was surprising to us. You know, and we were just out there a couple of weeks ago, um, tour in the tour in the the Cougar Covered and 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 the campus as well too, and agree those new buildings are amazing out there. But something we learned is that you know the 2,000 students there, you know, there's about half or more of them are talking. Uh, they they talk about food insecurity, and we're, we're going, my goodness, how can someone who is committed to further their education, and they have to worry about food. And so we need to do something about that. So we were happy to sponsor that. You go into the, you go into the, uh, the the cougar cupboard there, and it's a it's a it's a grocery store, and and you can buy you know some of them are some basic you know even toiletry supplies, but there's also a wide variety of foods, including we've got freezers in there now, so there's frozen meals, and so you can get fresh produce, you can get frozen meals, you can get everything you need um, to to again. Let's get rid of that food insecurity. In fact, even, even over like a Thanksgiving break or a thank, um, Christmas break, they'll put together packages that'll be a week's worth of food. And there's no limits on who can come in. It, I mean, they'll, you'll, they'll help families. And it, it's just an amazing part of the, the campus there. And, and again, um, we're, we're proud to be part of it and, and look forward to, you know, how do we, how do we continue to, to grow that? And, and, uh, but it's, it's been really well received. And I think this is our maybe our six year sponsor in that. And, and uh, we're super proud to do that. So thanks for, for letting me uh, uh, give a little more details on that. You are both wonderful amb ambassadors for WSU. So go Cougs. Go Cougs, thank you. Thank you very much, both of you. And I love that your representation of Washington, California, Hawaii, yeah. and <laughs> outstanding. Yeah. Good. All right, those were uh, wonderful. Um, Updates and reports. We are concluding our committee report. Uh, excuse me. We are concluding our governance reports, and we are moving into our committee reports. There, I got it out. All right. Um, and so our first order of business is actually the executive and governance committee, and we have one action item for that. I, I we had a very succinct uh, meeting yesterday. So. I'll turn it to um, Regent Blankenship to read the action item. Thank you, Madam Chair. After serving on the board for 129 years. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. <laughs> it, it's my honor to move that Marty Dickinson be reelected as chair of the WFU Board of Regents for the year beginning July 1, 2022. And that Regent Lisa Shower be re-elected to serve as vice chair of the WSU Board of Regents for the year beginning July 1, 2022, with the understanding 
She shall act as chair pro tempore in the absence of the chair, with the power to preside at the meetings and to sign all instruments required to be executed by the WSU Board of Regents. Is there a second? Second. Laura has seconded. Would you like to call for the vote? Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any discussion? Great. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Blankenship. Um, I think what we're going to do here before we just dive into the couple of, couple of meaty committee reports, we're just going to take a brief 10 minute break. We have plenty of time to be wrapping up by 1130. Regent Shower has the bulk of it. <laughs> Gonna give her a little time just to reread all those motions Thank she you. has. Uh, anyways, just a, a quick break, and so we will um, reconvene and start right at the top of the hour at 11 uh, a.m. Thanks, everybody.
That was <laughs> my hands, but I can do it here. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for the being patient and the quick break. We now are reconvening and are entering into the committee reports um, from each of the regents. I will be actually doing the committee report for strategic and operational excellence on behalf of Regent Shetler, who was unable to join us for this meeting. Um, we just had some really outstanding um, presentations and we're, we were fortunate enough to have um, Saichi Oba um, come before us and, and with a group of people to talk to us specifically about um, enrollment and retention at Washington State University. We know that is top of mind um, really across the nation, but also for the state. Right now, um, we believe that 7% of students nationwide have left higher education on a national scale. We are seeing that in the state of Washington at approximately 6.9%. Um, we also are seeing a pretty significant decline of males across um, higher ed in the state of Washington. That being said, um, for WSU, we are continuing to see that hold steady at approximately 46%. So we were encouraged around that, but know that that's an area that we want to continue to, um, to understand uh, what that might look like. For WSU, just for this spring, which I thought was really encouraging, we are seeing 30% more visitors this spring than we did um, in the spring uh, prior to 2021. Uh, and this is specifically to our Pullman campus. Doing some interesting things that I was really excited to hear about. Um, again, that uh, Saichi and others are working on around um, being creative of helping families from the West Side that are in need, but have a child that um, will be looking to come to Washington State, specifically to our Pullman campus, but to some of our other campuses like Tri-Cities, working with them on transportation and providing that transportation for them to be able to come and visit our different campuses. And so I love that that is a component of what we're doing, right? Of just being a little outside the box of um, looking on how we bring recruitment um, to our different campuses. Um, significant challenge that I think um, is no surprise, but it is a little staggering, um, but the challenges around transfer students. I mean, transfer students are, the, uh, largely the lifeblood of, um, of many of our campuses at Washington State University and make up a critical component to the fabric of who we are. We have seen a 24% decline in community colleges over the past two years around enrollment. And that's just, you just let that kind of settle in. That is a staggering number. Um, and when you think about two thirds of Washington State University's um, students come from our community community college system, you can see where that can be a significant challenge for us. So um, obviously working really, really hard to um, do outreach to those students that are currently in community college, um, working with them around monetary incentives, how do we help them apply to our university, um, how do we help drive um, th those transfers to come to Washington State University. So. Um, Bill Davis, our Vice Provost for Academic Engagement and Student Achievement, presented to us on some really kind of outstanding programs. Um, the Student Exploration Program um, is just a really neat um, area and it really focuses on community building. Um, they have a, currently they have a, a common reading program. It's a, a big giant book club, if you will. They're reading the book Sweetgrass by Robin Wall, if anybody's interested. Um, and they have a spring career expo, again, where they're continuing to help students discover what their future path might look like. I liked this one that this particular program and emphasis around student persistence and retention. And gosh knows they, our students have needed that along with our faculty in the last several years. Um, but again, there's a, um, they call it the Academic Rule 38B pilot project. You don't need to remember that. But most importantly, um, that is the program around helping students that fall below that 1.0 GPA. And instead of just kind of saying, you know what, 
too bad for you or you should have worked harder. Um, we actually are trying to spend time with these students to understand like what were their barriers because for many of them there are real barriers and so um, we loved the program Paul up there the Everett, Everett campus retention program it is definitely a model um, for how to help do assessments with students so thank you and um, I know that the, the system is looking at that and then the office of academic engagement the programs around just again how do we help um, our low income first generation students continue to get to that graduation. Um, and what I think is really outstanding is with that work we're doing, 85% of our low income first generation students are actually graduating at Washington State University. So changing lives the way we're supposed to. Um, again, Ellen Taylor was able to speak with us, our interim vice president for student affairs. And the biggest takeaway I think I have from all this entire last few days is the program, the Student Care Network. Um, really amazing program that is um, available to everybody in our WSU community and um, really appreciated that Dave is looking to be able to <coughs> elevate that with our faculty senate to make sure that everybody's aware of how even faculty members can go in there do reports that are anonymous to help our students that are struggling um the next thing that we were able to do so again I just a big thank you to Ellen and to Bill and to um, Sai Chi, we appreciate it very much. Um, we then moved into uh, a hot topic that um, we've been busy talking to um, both President Schultz and to um, our VP of Marketing and Communications, Bill Weiler. And we had a wonderful presentation. Um, I think um, you know Phil and his team are to be commended for doing amazing work with very, very limited resources. Um, and you know, it's a gift to be able to, from a brand specialist and somebody that does marketing for a living, what a gift to be able to uh, be the keeper of the WSU brand, because it is one hell of a brand. And um, the recognizable, just across the world, right, globally. I just would like to take one second for Laura, you to tell the story that you shared with me last night about the Cougs um, at the, the border. Oh, okay. So a friend of mine, um who uh, used to be the mayor of Pasco happened, and he's, been, he, he's, he's no longer the mayor, and he decided he was gonna take time off and just travel the world solo. And he's been doing that, and he, was, he happened to be in Europe, um, going through some of the Slavic countries, and he saw a notification that they needed help at a food area with the World Central Kitchen. Uh, which basically helps feed people under distress worldwide. And so this was right on the Ukraine-Poland border where all the refugees were coming, pouring out of Ukraine. So he, he gets up there and he's, um, he's just doing miscellaneous stuff. And all of us, he's wearing his coup hat. All of a sudden he hears this loud, go coups. <laughs> and it turns out that the person that called that out happens to be the COO of that organization um, and who was, who's actually there in, for the World Central Kitchen. It's, a, it's an amazing organization and the number of people they're feeding actually all over the world, but right now with the disaster in uh, Ukraine and so forth, it, it's just really amazing. So I have told Phil about that. So it may pop up right with, there. In the, and, you know, yeah, I told them too, <laughs> but it's, but you know, it, it basically, it shows a couple of things the generosity, personal generosity of Cougs to do stuff like that, but also that international friendship. And as someone who's not a natural born Coug, and it, but an adopted Coug, I can, I can just personally testify to the, the instant warmth that you get whenever you're around Cougs. So it's, it's something very special. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we um, were able to learn more about the amazing work we did and how we told the story around the Schweitzer Engineering Laboratory's gift of $20 million to Washington State University, largest gift in the history of our university. With Phil's leadership, we were able to um, recognize 159 new stories, a massive national reach through Yahoo News, and um, we believe that our potential reach was well over 70 million readers. So thank you very much, Phil. Um, as we move forward, we now know we have um, want to acknowledge President Schultz 
um, for finding and working with Bill to provide one-time funding um, for a multi-year brand marketing strategy. Um, as Phil said, we are prime to, to do this. The timing couldn't be better around having leadership like um, Saichi and Ellen and others and the coordination and collaboration around bringing brand, marketing, and enrollment um, outreach and recruitment together as one. I think it, it's going to be amazing. And Phil has his work cut out for him, and the board will continue to support him around, again, the prioritization and the playbook that will be um, an outcome of this um, work that he will be doing and how we continue to tell these amazing stories um, and the stories of, you know, Blake, Olivia, and Shauna this morning and the stories of Sam and so many others of what's happening uh, in our WSU formally. <laughs> so um, at this time, that is my official report. I don't think I have any action items. I think that's just region showers just hogged it all. So I have uh, one. <laughs> but, she let me have one. <laughs> oh, oh, you have one. Oh, so that's nice of you. So, um, okay. So that is, that is my report at this time. I, I will turn it to Student Affairs and Student Life Committee report um, for Regent Cerna. Thank you. Uh, we had two information items that were presented to us. And uh, the first uh, was from Shelby McKay, the Associate AD, Associate Athletic Director, uh, regarding the power of nine and the 50th anniversary of the of Title Nine. And Washington State University has a strong history with all of that because it was a landmark case uh, involving Washington State and uh, established women's rights. Uh, that changed the way Washington public colleges and universities support women's athletics. And it was the case of uh, Blair versus Washington State. Uh, and it's too bad I can't, the presentations we received were visual presentations. And one of them uh, had to do with the spot uh, regarding of this effort, Power of Nine, uh, that was uh, featuring the daughter, Pat Chun, the 11 year old daughter, and, and giving us the uh, the background and, and kind of setting the stage for young women today that are benefiting from Title IX and those that uh, were before them uh, <clears throat> established the history of Title IX. So this uh, campaign also is uh, honoring the uh, Title IX pioneers that include Karen Blair, Marcia St. Holtz, uh, Jean Eggert Heffler, Sudarat, and Joe Washburn uh, and their history of their contributions to Title IX. Uh, there's a fund that was established, and, and this is a campaign actually that uh, started uh, in February, and I think it was unveiled at a basketball game and uh, at halftime there. And it was also uh, launching an effort to really provide more funding and, and awareness to women's sports at Washington State University and how it's grown through the years, but also the legal action and the history that women that had to put themselves on the line to challenge uh, what was a, you know, a norm of not allowing them to play to get the opportunity to play. So that was an important thing. Um, and it also will culminate in September because there's going to be, that's where there'll be a big celebration of the uh, 50th anniversary and also an induction of uh, an all female class to the WSU Athletic Hall of Fame. So I think that's, uh, something very special and we should acknowledge Washington State University's involvement in that. And I'm also glad to see that there was an effort to really uh, raise some of the funding for women's sports and other issues as well. Uh, the second item that we uh, were informed about had to do with spaces and Sam kind of uh, touched on that with the efforts uh, that they're trying to do to have either pool or actually I think you need air hockey. <laughs> that's what, when I was like, that's, that's what we were big <laughs> Uh, or, or King or whatever. Um, but these spaces there uh, that, that we're talking about really are kind of affinity spaces. It's building community through affinity driven spaces and programs. And all of the campuses have uh, something going on, uh, helping students and giving an opportunity for students to gather, students that are veterans, students, uh, different uh, ethnic groups, students of color. Uh, students from the LBGTQ community, um, and, and students too that just might need to connect to someone because they're, they're dealing with some issues. And, and I know the mental health has been 
uh, a real issue for students during the time of COVID. So they, in some cases, have trained uh, individuals, I believe, Ellen, that, that, that are trained to kind of help students uh, if they have some issues. I know with the veterans, that's also uh, something that they, they can come to and, and have a place uh, where they can meet, um, particularly like the students of color and, and, and other students that, you know, they need someone to relate to, they can gather and they can have, uh, you know, a place just to be together. Actually, it was interesting when we were in Vancouver, there was a Latino group that was meeting right before, it was, we were walking into the entrance there uh, uh, for our meeting there. And I actually walked in there and said, hi, I'm Regent Cerna. And the first thing they said, what's a regent? And so <laughs> anyway, I gave them a quick, quick uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then I asked them about their group. And, and it was a, a Latino group that gets together. And then this was a group of young women, but they basically said, we, we gather every week for us to have conversations about how school's going, how things going with our families and cultural and things. So uh, it's it's great to see this happening because I think that uh, students with with everything that we're dealing with in our world today, just to have a place where you can uh, sit down, talk to somebody, have an opportunity for ping pong, pool, or whatever, uh, and just to be able to chill out as you're dealing with the stress of being a student and just living today is, is very important. And it's good to see that this is happening at all the campuses and and that WSU is uh, really. Uh, making this a concerted effort. So that's my report and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, great report. Okay, we will move over to our recent research and academic affairs with Regent Powell. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one item, action item, which we discussed yesterday. And uh, it's, it's basically establishment of the WSU Yakima Consortium site. Um, the proposal is to actually reclassify what's currently the Yakima instructional site to be the consortium site. And this goes under Department of Education definition. So um, this, the College of Nursing and the College of Pharma Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences have significant student populations in Yakima-based programs. And also the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine has opportunities for Yakima-based programs as well. So the WSU Yakima Consortium site, which is known as um, WSU Health Sciences Yakima, could, would serve as a health sciences focused educational and research campus, both with close ties to WSU Health Sciences in Spokane, as well as the Pacific Northwest University of Health Sciences in Yakima. So that said, uh, before bringing this motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with the Board of Regents Bylaw 2.12.B. And I move that the Board of Regents establish the WSU Yakima Consortium site as proposed. Okay, any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All That's right. really exciting for yes. WSU. Okay, then we, we uh, had a couple of information items as well. Uh, the first is um, items approved under delegated authority. Uh, typically, these are things like fac uh, yeah, faculty uh, manual things. Sometimes they're parking regs and things like that. But this is, um, we had several faculty manual revisions. Um, they basically um, addressed investigation of complaints and um, how that is conducted. Um, through the provost office and other organizations. Um, information about faculty, em emeritus uh, faculty appointments, and then finally removing gendered language and other miscellaneous editorial types of things. Um, so nothing earth shaking, but you know, just sort of it's more like a, a cleanup and, and, um, a, and clarity on how processes should work. The second information item um, was a little bit more meaty. And uh, we had a very interesting uh, presentation and discussion on research metrics. Um, these are actually uh, the metrics 
um, actually come and the data comes from the National Science Foundation, it's collected by the National Science Foundation, and as part of the higher education research and development, known as HERD, H-E-R-D, uh, and it looks at total expenditure, research expenditures of universities. So the funding uh, resources that are included are federal government funding, state and local, institutional funds, business funding, and some other sources such as nonprofits. So for WSU, our collective um, uh, 2020 uh, total research expenditures show that we rank 76 out of about 100 and roughly 150 research institutions. This includes not just publics, but also privates. So it's a really broad field. Um, and that our, um, our re the 2020 is the latest research information that's actually available currently from NSF. But we've learned, we, at that point, we were about 335.2 million. We've actually increased that more than 20 million for 2021 to 357.6 million. But the, the really interesting thing about this is, is rather than just taking it as face value, many of these universities, they're all very different sizes, different, very um, different numbers of faculty. And it, but if you take a look at the types of things, we are actually on the smaller side. And if you take the look at the, our research expenditures, divided by the number of research faculty that we have conducting it, it shows that we're actually punching what, punching above our weight, as uh, it might be said. So um, we're going to take a little bit more. In, in brand tagline. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's a marketer, so that should be. There you go. <laughs> I, I know you'd nail that one. <laughs> but the, the, we're going to take a, a sort of a deeper look at some of this. And we're going to, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that we also looked at the, um, the metrics of doctorates uh, and, and taking a look at doctorates awarded. And this, as well as the research expenditures, we looked at not only as our part in the, in the, in the larger, larger group, but we also looked at our peer group. And so for both the uh, research expenditures and the uh, doctorates produced, we're basically in the middle of our peer group. So this is something we're going to continue to uh, monitor on a, on a regular basis, but um, and look at continued strategies um, to, you know, to continue to grow these numbers. So Laura, yes. just one a point of clarification. Uh, I think for 2020, you said we were ranked as a 76th. What did I say? Um, uh, you, you, I think you said that correctly. It is seventy six, but there are not over nine hundred institutions. Oh, I, I wrote that list. down wrong. Okay, so mm -hmm. it is really quite impressive because that includes all of the large privates, etc. Um, so it's really an impressive. Thing. So Thank you for that correction. It may have been that mm -hmm. I misspoke yesterday. I doubt it. It's probably just me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Regent. Pop. Um, okay, turning it to Regent Shower to do both the, I will just have you go from Institutional Infrastructure Committee report right into finance and compliance. Okay, thank you. Um, so I was the only member of the Institutional Infrastructure, infrastructure Committee, um, Regent Redmond and uh, wasn't able to be there. And uh, Regent Shetler wasn't able to be there, and both would have, I think, really appreciated the content. And so we did uh, review the facilities and capital planning update that was uh, presented by Vice President for Finance and Administration, Stacy Pearson, and Associate Vice President for Facilities, Olivia Yang. A couple of comments that I want to make, and um, it does relate to what we covered in the Finance and Compliance Committee was the deferred maintenance backlog, capital funding and capital planning. We did review three types of funding, which I think is important to understand a bit because we are only really diving into one key component as it relates to the Finance and Compliance Committee. But those three types of funding uh, that were discussed and are in our report is the annual operating, the capital renewal and the capital funding. And what I appreciate about the leadership team is this philosophy in terms of how we're optimizing our expenditures and how we're partnering together. So this idea that there's um, not only a need to look at 
how we are funding new buildings, how we're renovating existing buildings, but how we're partnering with our governmental relations team in terms of what good community partnership looks like. So um, I think Olivia made some comments about instead of going to the legislature with, hey, we need 20 million because we think that we need maybe 15, well, we're going to ask for 20 and we'll see what they come back with. And then they're going to choose what they take off our you know, list that might bring us back down to 15. We're going to go to them with 15 and a good strategy on why we need that 15. So that just continues to kind of thread what I think President Schultz was saying at the very beginning is this very strong um, leadership commitment to how do we work together to achieve our greatest results. And so I heard that loudly as we were really talking about infrastructure. Um, so I thought that that was a, a really good conversation and I was able to spend a little bit more time utilizing that context to dive into some of the questions that I had related to the capital budget request that was um, part of the finance and compliance committee that we will take action on in this next part of um, the work that we're doing today. The other comment that I just want to make in terms of this committee is that it is important. I think we all know this, but it's important to say out loud. We have kind of a um, colliding labor issue and cost of materials issue, which is an inflation issue right now. And so we're seeing both these things happen at the same time, which is increasing the cost of our ability to, to build new things and renovate um, existing spaces. So um, how that plays out in terms of um, our capital cost is, is real and something that uh, we're seeing. So good conversation. Hopefully uh, my fellow regents that weren't able to participate will be able to take a look at the materials and I'm sure they'll have lots more questions at our next meeting. So that's my committee report. Uh, for that committee, I'm gonna transition directly into the finance and compliance committee report. And I'm gonna use the, um, some of the words that I uh, explained from that committee to describe how I um, felt about the finance committee. So I'm a communicator, certainly not a finance and numbers person and uh, deeply appreciate our uh, finance CFO, Stacey Pearson. And so I'm just gonna read to you the words that I have heard, um, collaboration, partnership, together, outreach, engagement, listen, respond, the teams that have been working together, athletics, student affairs, finance and administration, budget, governmental and external relations. The action words that I feel like I need to communicate today are I've read, I've listened, um, I understand from my lived experience, and yet I have a heavy heart that we come every year with asks of our students, um, with implications to our faculty and our staff, and we're never able to do everything that I would love to do, given the constraints that we have within our fiscal overall ecosystem. And so with that, um, I have 11 action items, and many of which I know create a ripple effect. And so I want to say just from my perspective that um, I am pleased to know that um, in our discussions that we have had that there will be an overall compensation plan and philosophy that our president is moving forward with with our leadership team to better understand how we can prioritize that, that there's a culminating effect of fees um, whether that be a parking fee, or that is a student fee or a technology fee, um, that even uh, adjustments as big as a two and a half percent compensation adjustment <coughs> get minimized when you add additional fees that might be the same um, as a tuition increase and that we see that. Um, and yet I still believe that the actions that need to be taken today are still necessary. So. With all of that being said, I also wanna say how proud I am in this moment of the information items that we saw today, the work that's being done to engage stakeholders to get feedback around um, capital budget items, the extensive um, engagement that's being done and the tremendous success. I hope everyone has had a chance to look at the 2021 annual financial report trends and debt report. It is outstanding. And 
I want to thank the president for the phenomenal leadership. Um, the progress is just exceptional. So with that, I am going to move us right into the 11 action items that we have today. Um, and I will pause after each motion for, um, for action. After I read the motion, I'll seek a second, ask for discussion, and then move into um, approval. So motion for action item number one, 2023 to 2025 operating budget request. Before bringing the motion, I need to for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents Bylaw 11.12.B. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the initiation of the process to develop the state operating budget request decision packages for 2023-2025, including approval of established priorities as well as criteria for developing additional decision packages and delegate authority to the president or designee to approve the final request and any adjustments that may be needed prior to the submission to the Office of Financial Management, OFM. The delegation of authority is contingent upon the following, that the president or designee, one, meet with the executive and governance committee in August, 2022, to discuss the final operating budget request prior to submission. And two, the final request as submitted to OFM is presented to the full Board of Regents as an information item at the September 2022 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. There's um, so moved. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. All right, motion for action item number two, 2023, 2025 capital budget request. Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents bylaw 1112B. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the state capital budget request for 2023-2025 and delegate authority to the president or designee to approve the final request and any adjustments that may, need, may be needed prior to submission to the Office of Financial Management, OFM. The delegation of authority will be conditioned upon the following, that the president or designee one, meet with the Executive and Governance Committee in August 2022 to discuss the final capital budget request prior to submission. And two, the final request is submitted to OFM is presented to the full Board of Regents as an information item at the September 2022 meeting. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion for action item number three, academic year 2022-2023 tuition rates. I move that the WSU Board of Regents set tuition rates for academic year 2022-2023 as proposed. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. None. Okay. Motion for action, item number four, services and activities fee rates for academic year 2022-2023. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the academic year 2022-2023 SNA fee rates as recommended by the student-led SNA fee committees representing each of the WSU campuses as proposed. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Halfway there? Okay. <clears throat> Motion for action item number five. 
services and activities fee committee allocations for summer 2022 and academic year 2022-2023. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the allocation of service and activities fees for summer 2022 and academic year 2022-2023 as recommended by the student-led SNA fee committees representing each of the WSU campuses as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I have something I'd like to ask of Student Government Council for the upcoming year, is to consider the ways that as our one WSU system comes together, consider the ways that students are have a presence on more than one campus and the impact that that has on our SNA fees that are separated by campuses. And I would like to ask Student Government Council to create some sort of proposal or plan for how to meet student needs as they navigate a system that is a little more fluid. Um, so that's something I would like to see by next year. Shane, I'll put that on my list to work with Ellen and some others uh, in Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion for action, item number six, academic year 2022-2023 housing and dining rates. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the academic year 2022-2023 housing and dining rates as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Me again. Um, Agent Wright. I would just like to um, bring our attention back to the memo that we read yesterday by our GPSA president regarding the lack of representation on the um, housing committee for graduate professional students and the disproportionate impact that will have on graduate professional students and graduate and family housing on campuses or on, excuse me, on the Pullman campus, uh, especially as that will essentially become a wash for their <coughs> increase with um, either master's or doctoral. Assistance, assistantship stipends. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Thank you. <coughs> Motion for action, item number seven, Student Recreation Center mandatory student fee rate change. I move that the WSU Board of Regents authorize the rate change for the Student Recreation Center fee, SRC, at the Pullman cam campus effective fall semester 2022 as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion for action, item number eight, WSU Pullman Undergraduate Technology Fee Committee Allocations for Academic Year 2022-2023. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the academic year 2022-2023 allocations as recommended by the Pullman Undergraduate Student Technology Fee Committee as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion for action, item number nine. WSU Vancouver Technology Fee Committee allocations for academic year 2022-2023. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the academic year 2022-2023 allocations as recommended by the Vancouver Student Technology Fee Committee as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? All right. So first. Motion for action item number 10, athletic budget transfers for fiscal year 2022. Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with the Board of Regents bylaw 212B. I move that the Regents approve temporary transfers from housing and dining and parking 
and other auxiliary accounts as needed to cover end of fiscal year deficit balances in athletics, which will be immediately reversed at the beginning of the next fiscal year. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? I just would like to recognize and thank our faculty representative, um, Dave Turnbull, for requesting that we um, provide greater clarity in the motion um, and greater transparency of how that works. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So motion for action item number 11. Athletics budget approval fiscal year 2023. Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents bylaw 212B. I move that the WSU Board of Regents approve the fiscal year 2023 athletics budget as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. That is my report, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate your work on that. And again, um, echo your comments of gratitude towards uh, those that put all of the work and the research and data together. So we are moving into our other business session of our meeting. Um, at this time, I would like to inform um, folks that the Regents met in executive session with legal counsel yesterday and we discussed a pending litigation involving the university. As a result of those discussions, we have an action item. So with that, the action item is, I move that the Board of Regents adopt resolution number 2205066656, approving the tentative Central settlement of all claims related to Yakima County Superior Court case number 17203313039 and delegate authority to the president or designee to sign and take any other steps needed to finalize the agreement. At this time, I'm asking for a second. Second. Thank you. Board discussion, any further discussion on the matter? Okay, uh, all those in favor of this motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. As we wrap that piece and move into our public comment, I did wanna just take a quick moment to recognize um, somebody who's just been an amazing and outstanding resource to the Board of Regents and to me as well. I've learned so much from her. And that is um, Danielle Hess. Uh, this is Danielle's last official meeting serving in her current capacity. But the really great news is that she will be becoming the Executive Director for Policy and Governance for Washington State University. And so um, we're pleased that you're continuing on, but we will miss you. You've done a really nice job, so thank you. Welcoming Nathan now to be um, stepping in as um, our resource and counsel. A little tidbit about Nathan. He was born in the Pullman Hospital oh, um, and then graduated from WSU and then traveled many different places. But Nathan is the story of how he found his way back home. So mm -hmm. you, we'll put you on the, the next version of the, the song, right? Yeah. yeah. We've got a baby picture of you out there, Nathan. Yeah. So um, thank you again to the, to the AG office and for the work that you guys do on behalf of the University and the state of Washington. Okay, at this time, um, we're going to be opening for public comment. Um, we will now have the next 10 minutes of the meeting uh, dedicated for the public to provide comments to the board. Please keep in mind that there is a two minute <coughs> limit per speaker. And we have two, looks like two people signed up. Um, our first, I believe, is, um, do we have Ryan Culp? Hi, Ryan. And Ryan is a student at Washington State University. His topic is the divestment of fossil fuels. And um, I'll turn it to you, Ryan. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. you can. All right, thank you. Um, I'd first like to thank um, all members of the Board of Regents for this opportunity to comment. Uh, my name is Ryan Culp. I'll be a junior in the fall, and I'm a majoring in neuroscience at WSU in the Pullman campus, and as treasurer of the student organization, uh, Environmental Sustainability Alliance. I am personally interested in fossil fuel investment. Since my expenses at the school are being directly used to invest in companies that do not have a future and I do not want to support. I wanna make change where I can and affecting how my university invests in what I can do on a local level um, to address climate change. We don't have forever to make these changes, so making them sooner is much safer and better for all of us than later. Our petition directed towards student interest that we discussed uh, in a prior meeting in investment is currently at 628 signatures on uh, change.org. We are also planning a, facu um, a faculty petition for the fall semester and some faculty have already requested for the petition design. Um, thank you, uh, Regent Dickinson, for meeting on March 8th to discuss the subcommittee's divestment campaign with uh, Stephen. He's another member, he's the chairman. Uh, he could not be here to make comments with me, so I'm giving his thanks in his place. I would also like to thank the board and President Schultz for moving forward on fossil fuel investment by deciding to implement environmental, social, and gov uh, government governance investing. Excuse me. Also, thank you, President Schultz, for your plan to form an environmental sustainability task force to coordinate efforts on fossil fuel investment and reducing WSU's carbon footprint. Um, our group would like to request an opportunity to meet with President Schultz um, or his designees early in the coming fall semester to provide input as they develop principles for WSU's ESG uh, investing, which will include a possible fuel investment component. The ESA hopes to um, help expedite the process of developing these principles and to show uh, why fully divesting from the world's largest 200 companies with carbon reserves is crucial. Also, my WSU email is ryan.culp at wsu.edu. And uh, I would like to thank you all again for this opportunity to comment. Thank you very much, Ryan. Appreciate your comments. Uh, next, we have um, Susan McFadden. Her affiliation with Washington State University is faculty. Um, her topic she wished to speak on, speak on is financial support for College of Nursing. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to have you in person. Susan. Thank you. I'm happy and to be congratulations here. on it's National Nursing Day. So yeah. yes, it is. I'm happy to speak. Yeah, to you today. Um, thank you, and welcome to the College of Nursing. I'm on my home front here, and I'm very proud to be um, part of the Cook family. My name is Susan McFadden, and I'm an associate teaching professor. Um, in both the graduate and the undergraduate program um, here at the College of Nursing, and I'm co-chair of our faculty governance organization. I'm also a proud um, 1985 graduate of WSU um, baccalaureate. I have my baccalaureate of science degree in nursing. And in 2000, I returned to school, much like Shauna, and um, became a nurse practitioner. And since that time, I've been balancing the, my practitioner practice with teaching here at the college. Um, as for my time teaching, uh, my time at WSU has given me an opportunity to teach in pediatrics and community health and gerontology. I've been able to travel to Peru with nursing, pharmacy, and physical therapy students um, working in the Amazon basin. And currently, I teach diversity, um, diversity in healthcare to a group of 130 students every semester. And I have a small group of students who are teaching, who are learning fundamentals of nursing, um, where we spend a day a week with the veterans at the Spokane Veterans Home and learn about chronic disease um, and aging in medicine. Um, Wednesday, I joined Chancellor DeWald um, with our students in convocation, and I will get to celebrate with them at graduation this afternoon. Our nursing students studied throughout, as we know, they were the pandemic, uh, this was the pandemic group, right? But those nursing students were the only students on in, in the university to stay on campus and in clinical. Uh, during their time as on campus, they remained in nursing homes and hospitals. They were active in supporting COVID testing. And with the support of my colleague, um, Kay Olson, they vaccinated over 10,000 people. 
in the in the state. Um, that is the impact of a land grant university. Regent Shore, you spoke of having a bit of a heavy heart with some of the decisions that we have to make. And that is what I present today as well, because while celebrating the students at convocation, I also sat beside a very talented and committed nurse educator who is leaving the College of Nursing. She's also a dear friend. Um, she is not getting the resources that she needs to continue teaching. This particular colleague um, asked for a teaching asked for a teaching assistant to help her um, with the grading of her genomics assignments for, for the 130 students that she has. She was told that there is no budget. She has unique knowledge balancing science with the ethical and social implications needed for nurses to help our patients navigate the new reality of healthcare. She is a loss, and we are losing other faculty and staff as well. If we are going to continue developing caregivers of the future, the College of Nursing needs increased financial support. We need to retain quality faculty and staff, and that just is not happening. Baccalaureate prepared nurses save lives. We know that you want them at your, at your bedside in your aging mother's home. Our state and our community needs nurses, and we all know that, right? 2022 state legislatures certainly recognize that. And they provided additional funding to other public universities and the community colleges. WSU was not included. While others are increasing enrollment or developing new programs, WSU is cutting our BSN enrollment in the fall because the College of Nursing does not have the funding that we need to support them. So my ask today, is that you find a way to increase the financial support for the college and for our students so that I can do my job and my colleagues can do our job to continue educating the next generation of nurses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Comments are greatly appreciated and that you were able to come and articulate in such a eloquent manner. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any others that are signed up at this time? Okay. Well, everybody, we made it. The Regents are adjourning at this time. A board meeting, the next regular scheduled board meeting we will be having will be September 15th through the 16th, and we will be in Pullman. So, again, um, to all those Regents who are setting out to do graduations in the Tri Cities, Pullman, Vancouver, Everett, to our chancellors of each of these campuses, thank you so much. And to President Schultz, um, thank you as always for a really wonderful two days. And we can never ever do any of this without our fearless leader, um, who really actually pulls all the strings, and that is Desiree. Thank you very much.